Hello everyone, welcome back. Ben's not at the microphone. I know, I'm, I'm looking, uh, looking at Lumber Delta's YouTube page. Shout out to her. Yeah, because Ben's yeah. really upset about the fact that we Stupid. haven't haven't Stupid. now had to record for five hours straight. I was looking forward to it! It was going to be like the event no, of the you century. Weren't. You spent two uh, weeks uh, talking about how painful it was going to be. No! Saying like, oh god, it's so bad that we can't record this day because we don't have five hours straight to record. And I'm like, yeah, okay, Ben, go for it. I wanted to record, and then we ended up streaming for two and a half hours! Oh my god. It was two and three quarter hours. Give us a bit, bit of credit where credit you is due. Right. Shout out to Kikonia, looking forward to that. Will that be out by it's, now? It's almost no, like... Oh my god. It's almost like, Ben, that uh -huh. the chapters in this are divided by where the tips are, and the videos are not. That's dumb, though. That's dumb. Is it dumb? Are you saying dumb. that we should have recorded multiple multi-hour no. episodes and had this entire chap- what? entire, you know, thing be 14 videos long? You know, why not? Why not do that? That would be fun. No, it wouldn't. We usually end up doing two parts anyway, to, to like, chapter cuts. That is anyway. untrue. We do! People complain about the fact that we don't. You know what? I haven't seen those complaints. I ain't seen them. Oh, no, that's because PD doesn't comment anymore. Why not? I don't know. I miss- I miss PD. I Shout miss out PD to PD. Well. We miss you in the YouTube comments. At least you're on the Discord to, he to heckle me. <laughs> because that's where I usually see you. Oh, God. Anyway. Excited for these to be some regular sized episodes, guys. <laughs> but the finale of Sumi Horoboshi in climactic match. Back. I'm assuming this is Uishi. Alright. I mean, either that or it's just like some random tutorial issue, but you know what? Or it's Sonazaki. It doesn't matter. Because you know what the rule is? Is that everybody is Oishi. That's true. Lokonomi has beat all vehicles. Lokonomi has beat all vehicles. A hostage situation has broken out. The Hinamiza Forestry Service building. There are reportedly multiple hostages. All vehicles. Vehicles. <laughs> are to head to the Forestry Service building immediately. Wow, it's a lovely picture. That was a nice picture. Have we seen that one before? Oh, he's he's already fucking here. Oh, my John, sorry I'm late. What is going on? Uh, hello, sir. T today around 1 p.m., the Hinamizawa Branch School's classrooms were taken over. All 25 students have been taken hostage. What's the time now? The suspect's initial demands were to prohibit all entry to the school branch's school property and to secure a hotline to us. Sounds good. Sounds good. So they're willing to negotiate with us from this daughter. What is going on? Also, the suspect is, is asking for you, oishi san It's Rena or Yugo. It's Rena. I know, I just said it so quickly that it blew past like the it's wind. Just, it's just very important to get this right. yugo san You have to take time with line. Very well. We seem to be inseparable, huh? I'll be dealing with her until the end. Oishi gave a crooked what? smile. What? Is that- what? I'm not allowed to narrate in that voice? But I like- I like narrating the well, neutral parts. screw you. I'm narrating- Re Oishi gave a crooked smile. I so can just cut that. Anyways, I could just cut you that. Could. I won't. You won't, could. because he kind of rolled into one of your other lines, so you can't cut it now. It'd be awkward. Anyway, I think this is you. We don't know if she has any accomplices. The curtains are closed, so we can't confirm the situation. If you asked to ever told us about this? No, Reina Ryugu declared it herself. Yeah. Therefore, we don't know what's going on inside. The teacher received a call from Reina Ryugu as she left the classroom before the incident took place. Mm. This has been well planned, huh? Has anyone from the first service been taken hostage? Nobody from the service was there today. All 25 hostages are students. That number matches with the attendance the teacher took this morning. Hmm. Plus the suspect, right? Have you seen anyone else suspicious other than Reina Ryugu? No, we've seen someone peeking out from behind the curtain, but it was the suspect herself. We're guessing there must be at least one or two more of them, though. Hmm, well, maybe she really is doing it by herself. Reina Ryugu was a true believer in Mio Takano's scrapbooks. According to those scrapbooks, the entire village was Reina Ryugu's enemy. She didn't have anyone she could trust. However, Oishi had also believed in Mio Takano's delusion. It was possible that someone who was influenced in the same way was following Rena Ryugu. <gasps> Oishi-san, the principal and the teacher are here. Kind of being a very important business trip. <laughs> He's just right here. Hello, Jesus, are you okay? <laughs> Screw you, Mr. Principal. You don't matter. Oishi ran up to Chie Sensei, who was crying with a handkerchief up to her face. I did nothing, and then I ran away from the school. Trying as a good girl for her to do something like this, there must be some mistake. Damn it, <laughs> damn it Chie! Look, I love her, but oof. 
If I were to do this by the book, I would ask you about Ryugo-san's recent behavior, but when it comes to Ryugo-san, I probably know better than you do, That's because you literally know nothing. Please do not worry, I will take care of this as peacefully as possible, Coxgun. <laughs> <laughs> do it! <laughs> I have Uzi's in dog, let me go get them. Chie Sensei was huddled over, and Uishi didn't think he could say anything else to her. On the contrary, the principal was staying strong, trying to figure out how to take care of the situation. Good on you. Ah, uh, Mr. Oishi, please. <laughs> if possible, I'd like to request to be a hostage myself. I'll take the place of the children. Mr. Oishi? I thought you said. You said Mr. Oishi. I know. Straight up. And it was and amazing. It's dialogue. What? It's, it's probably Chie, but... Chie, it's Chie. Oh, it's Chie. like, no! Why we do that instead? It's all my fault. Oh. It is. It is true. It's all your fault. Please do not blame yourselves like Voice in Sky is saying. I have things I want to ask you, so I'd appreciate it if you cooperated. Bon Shikun, please show them the blueprints. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Section Chief Takasugi is on the radio. Ah, uh, Takasugi, what a blowhard. Hello, this is Oishi. Oishi san, how goes things? Goma Gai Kun informed me of. The Wait, hold on. Gumachan informed me of the situation. The suspect is underage, ah? Huh? Please keep strict control of the press. Mm, I understand, Oishi Nasu. The suspect is requesting me, Oishi, as negotiator. Is that okay with you, Oishi? You've known Rena Ryugo since the parasite incident from the other day. I bet she still thinks you're her ally. Only you can do the job. Good luck, Oishi. <laughs> I really don't want to, but since I caused so much trouble for me, I guess I'll have to do this to make up for it. Rishi-san, Reina Ryuka's on the car phone. It was faster than expected. I will go get it. Thank you. Hello, this is Oishi. Oh, fuck. It's that red again. Oishi-san? Do you think it's getting darker? I don't know if it's darker since last time, but it's it's been a while since I've seen it, and I'm scared. Me too. I'm scared. Oishi-san, this is Ryugu. Hello, this is Oishi. Here's the signal weak on your car phone. Because <laughs> you sound like a bitch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's kind of hard to hear. <laughs> Just like me, it is getting old. So that's a yes. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing that voice for? Get out of here. I'm the only one who can hear the country girl accent on this, on this show. Get out of life. Ed of Fiat's cut that man down. I wish you and I exchanged friendly words. A long, long cord trailed through the hallway from the teacher's office. That cord extended further to the phone on the podium in the classroom. Let's get down a. Uh, you know, you know, you know, make me peek, aren't you? Well, yeah, it's we get, definitely we get, yeah, yeah. not anyone from Milan. Thank God. I know, I was like, why are we getting down to business? Who are we defeating? Let's get down to business. I'll check to see if you're qualified to negotiate for me. Okay, suits. You are my ally, aren't you, Oishi san Of course! Let's expose the conspiracy of this Urasaki family together! You and me, yes! Oishi answered without hesitation. Was he still my ally? Or was this lie detective just saying what I want to hear? Yes, on both accounts. Yeah, yeah. Either way, I only had a wish to depend on. If I couldn't trust him, I was stuck. There would be nothing else I could do. You didn't believe me for a while either, did you, Keiji Kun? But you do now, right? Keiji Kun was sitting on the floor facing away from me with his head resting in his hands. Comrades now, huh? Wait, yeah, we get Yeah, that's right. In the Ryugu asked Keiji my about if he was a comrade, but I couldn't hear his voice. Mm. Was she trying to tell me that Keiji my about was still alive or that he was being forced to obey because of the hostages? Both. My son is your ally too, huh? That's nice. But weren't you suspicious of my son for a while? Yep. When I heard about the BB gun incident, I, I couldn't believe it, but we can't let the past fool us. We have to learn from the past in order to grow. <laughs> that is very good. You're absolutely right about that. That was why we forgave each other, so I don't doubt Keiji Kun anymore. Keiji Kun is my comrade. 
I understand. Therefore, Keiji couldn't smile at all, isn't he? Please say hello to him for me. Also, hand phone to him. Sure, I will. Actually, I'd like to say hello to him myself. Can you come to the phone? The conversation stopped suddenly. It made me nervous. Did I say something wrong? Sure. Here he is. Keiji Kern. I wish Sam wants to talk to you. They heard some rattling and rustling on the other side of the phone. Uh, hello? This is my bar. He sounded monotone. Unable to disobey, Keiji Maiba must have been pretending to follow Renaryuga's orders. Hello, maiba This is Oishi from the Okonomi Police Station. Thank you for coming to the phone tonight. Let's do this together! Yeah, let's do this together. What is Ryuko-san doing right now? She's walking around the classroom. Mayabara-san, please say yes if your answer is yes and the yeah if your answer is no. Do you know what Ryuko-san wants? Yeah. That answer told me for sure. Keiji Maibara wasn't Rena Ryuko's accomplice. There's no way Rena wouldn't tell her accomplice what she wanted after planning a uh, hostage situation like this. How would he help someone who wouldn't even tell him what she wanted? They will ask you directly, are you Rena Ryugu's ally? No, no, let me change my question, hold on. Are you being threatened by Rena Ryugu? Yes. There you go. Mm. The other guys in the car listening in on a conversation raise their fists in the victory. Is Rena Ryugu the only suspect? Yes. If she was the only suspect, then we could respond appropriately. I guess nobody else believed in taking those scrapbooks. If so, my being involved was even more embarrassing. Ah. As I thought about my next question, I heard the phone being taken away from Keiichi. Then I came back on the line. See? Keiichi is my ally, isn't he? Yes, yes, you were right. That's very promising. Okay, now it's your turn to talk, Oishi san. How the simultaneous raids on the Son of Zaki family are going, remember? You promised me when we talked on the phone before. Have you found the secret research facility yet? I had to decide on what to say. Should I tell her we conducted raids or not? Maybe she already knew we didn't raid. Maybe she was just testing me. We're trying to come up with a plan for the simultaneous raids as we speak. We're talking to the prefecture of the police as well as the public safety division. We're talking about the entire city, so we need a little more time to prepare for it. You're taking too long. I wish you saying, don't you realize what kind of emergency situation Shishibona City is in right now? What are you doing? I wish you said, you do believe me, don't you? You're my ally, right? Right? Yes. Please answer me. Of course I am, yes. But the police department is a little more complicated than you think. I'm doing my best, I really am. The thing is, this is on a really big scale. Like Lady Justice scale, like she hangs on her hands, you see. Much bigger than that. Oisha San, they poisoned me recently with the parasites that killed Tomataki Flash San. They poison me with them. I've been itching like crazy since yesterday. I'm all blooded from scratching my throat. I might claw up my throat and die at any moment. You're telling me you're still preparing? I knew it. I wish he didn't realize how dire the situation was. He understood there was some kind of a conspiracy in Namzawa, but he didn't realize how soon their plan was going to be executed. Besides, I was already feeling itchy all over my body and was bound to soon die the same way as Tom Attack and Flash Sand. I'm sorry, I really am doing my best, but everybody asks me if I have proof. Proof? Do you need proof? Mirce and scrapbooks. Maybe that was what I need to convince the police. I was afraid someone would destroy the evidence if I handed them over to Ishi San, so I kept them with me, but I didn't have much longer to live. I might not even make it until tomorrow morning. That's right, I might be dead before tomorrow. I would die tonight. Okay, I'll I'll give you Mio San scrapbooks. Please, use them to convince the other policemen. Ah, that should help, yes. Please do give me the scrapbooks. I looked at my backpack, which was lying at my feet. Mio San scrapbooks were in there. 
is our last resort. I wish you send all your best. No, you, you must take care of it, please. Of course, of course, trust me. I'll expose their conspiracy that I definitely believe in. I knew the police would take too long to get things moving. They're an organization, after all. That's why I'm doing this, to make them understand. You have an excuse now. Please, use this chance wisely. Thank you, thank you. You can count on me. So how should we do this? Do you want me to come get it? I knew she wouldn't let me into the classroom. She was still cautious. I, I could guess where Renaviyuku was going to take this thing, so I tried to stay ahead of her. I handed the memo with my instructions on it to a colleague. I can't really leave the classroom, so I'll have Keiichi Kuhn deliver them to you. Maybe that's better. If you leave the building, something might happen. What do you mean? Well, I'm, I'm sure this Onazaki family already knows about what's going on here. I'm sure they didn't expect you to do something like this, so they might come to shut you up. They shut me up? Do you mean... By shooting you, a hitman from the Sunazaki family may try to put a stop to this by sniping you. That's why you shouldn't come outside. Don't even go near the windows. I saw you peeking out the window, but you shouldn't do that. They may fire at any time. Wait a minute. Aren't there policemen around? Can't you stop that from happening? We would if we could, but it's so open around here. A well-trained sniper can easily shoot as far as 400 meters. As you know, attack units from the Zunazaki family have gone through military training, and they specialize in assassination techniques. Very scary. Don't underestimate them. I need you to help me expose the conspiracy of the Zunazaki family. Man, imagine, you know, getting to this situation where your p fucking target is clearly paranoid. And I know, telling them, it. like, God, you could totally get shot. You might oh, die in there. What one of those kids might doing? Look, one of those kids might be a sniper themselves. You should just kill them to make sure, this dude. This is fantastic. <laughs> He's going to get everyone killed. Oh, uh, we she's the best negotiator. Uh, right, right. Right. Yeah, okay. I understand. Thank you for your warning. Even if my life is to end tomorrow, I, I can't die now. That's right, under no circumstance should you peek out the windows and look at what I am doing, okay? Be very careful. So not to pay attention to man behind curtain. The phone conversation ended. Renna Ryugo was going to let Keiichi Maiba deliver the script books. Did you get what I wrote on the memo already? Yeah, yes, we've got it. Do you think it'll work? They scared her, so I don't think she'll peek out the windows. I am sure she'll have her eyes open, though. I'll work around it. I roughly understood what was going on from the phone conversation. Okay, Cage Kern. Here are the scrapbooks. Their contents are very important. They're proof of this son of Zaki family's conspiracy, and the police can use them as evidence to conduct a raid. Please take this to Uishi San, okay? And when you give it to him, come right back. I'm watching you. If you do something you ain't supposed to, I'll, I'll be angry. Rena took a couple of old scrapbooks from her backpack and gave them to me. And she cast a sidelong glance at Mion. I'll tell you about these later, Mi-chan. I'll tell you all about what a scary conspiracy your family was planning. Or maybe you already know, huh? <laughs> anyway, go on, Keiichi Kun. Just go halfway out in the schoolyard. Don't say anything. You're just delivering scrapbooks. Don't talk, okay? If you do... If it was she, Sensei, she'd slap you with a ruler, but hmm, what should I use instead? Uh, alright, alright, I won't even say a word. Come on, come on, put the hatchet down. I'm your ally, right? Trust me, okay? Hmm, yeah, you're right. I trust you. So please, don't betray me, okay? Rena's eyes were telling me clearly. They were telling me she didn't trust me. But even in this state, she also knew she shouldn't distrust her friends. Therefore, although she didn't trust me, she was pretending to. That's why she didn't tie me up. Uh, okay, I'll be, I'll be going. I'll be right back. Hmm, okay. I walked past my friends who were lying down on the floor and headed to the exit. Big off. I saw some of their faces as I passed. Some were fearful. Some were sure that I'd use the opportunity to run. And some were scared that they'd die if I did. Don't worry, guys. I won't let her even touch any of you. If Rena tries to do something, I'll stop her even if I have to risk my own life. Anyway, 
I'd do whatever it took to ensure that nobody died. I had to make sure Rena didn't get angry. I'd just wait for the right moment. I went down to the school entrance and changed my shoes and then unlocked the door and stepped outside. I felt the fresh air on my skin. I saw the lights from the police cars. I could feel all the policemen looking at me. And then I ran away. As soon as I was in the schoolyard, a little voice tried to tempt me. <laughs> I was free from Rena now. <laughs> If I ran off the school grounds, I'd be free. Hello, that's me. I'm the little voice. What was I thinking? If I did something like that, Rena would go crazy and who knows what else she'd do. The important thing here wasn't my safety. It was to make sure Rena didn't kill anyone. I saw a big man coming towards me from the school gate. I was probably Oishi-san. Hmm. Are you at Keiichi Maibara-san? Hello, I am Oishi from Okinomiya Station. You can call me Kuro-chan. Sorry, Rena told me not to talk and just to give these to you. So please just take them in silence. Hmm. I understand. These are the scrapbooks, huh? Ah, uh, I will take them. I tried to hand the scrapbooks to Uishi, but he stepped aside a little. Eh? Confused as to what he was doing, I changed my position to him again. He took them that time. And at that point, Uishi put something that was under his jacket into my pocket. Hmm. Don't worry, even if Yugo-san was watching, the building is behind you, so she couldn't have seen that. Eh, what is this? I couldn't look into my pocket because I didn't want Rena to suspect anything, but whatever it was, it was probably heavy for its size. Freaking sly detective boy. I have a memo for you, too. On your way back to the classroom, please read it without Yugo-san noticing. Mm-hmm. Go on now, she'll get suspicious. I just followed his directions. I was worried Rena had begun to suspect something. When I looked at the classroom, the curtains were closed, but that didn't mean she wasn't peeking out through a crack. Mm. I went back to the entrance and locked the door. If Rena checked and found the door unlocked, it would cause more trouble. Rena was in the classroom. There was no way she'd come down this way. She was alone. If she left the classroom, everyone would get up and run. They couldn't run because Rena was there, but they were all waiting for their chance. The entrance then was Rena's blind spot. As I changed my shoes, I quickly removed what Oishi San had put into my pocket. There was a radio with an earpiece. Oh, damn. And something else that looked like a short police baton. There was also a folded piece of paper. I opened the piece of paper and saw a note written in small print. Dear Maibarakun, please hide the bug in your pocket. It picks up even a low voice, so you can use it to get in touch with me. By using the earphone, you can hear me in return. There is also a spray for self-protection. It, it sprays as far as one meter. Make sure you aim for the face. This must be the spray. I guess it's safe to try it here. I held down the button and then gas sprayed out from the nozzle at my eyes. I was really <laughs> I screamed. Decision. I screamed in pain. Rena came in and killed everybody. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to Rena's hatchet, this required some caution, but it was small enough to fit inside my hand. It was reassuring that I could hide it so easily. In other words, it was now possible for me to stop Rena. As I realized my classmates' fates rested on my shoulders, I felt sweat form on my face. Oh, God. The memo continued. The spray is just for self-defensive purposes. Pepper spray only impairs eyesight, and while it makes your enemy powerless due to extreme pain and coughing for at least 30 minutes, it is not powerful enough to render them unconscious. Therefore, please, do not forget there is possibility that your enemy may fight back desperately in panic. The spray is your last resort. Please do not depend on it, but if you need to, make sure to use it. Love, Oishi. Is he telling me to use it or not? It was probably one of those grown-up issues. If the cops entrusted me solely with the fate of the hostages, and I failed, they'd be held liable. So while he gave me a weapon, he made me consider its use. I hid the bug and the spray in my pockets and went back to the classroom. Mm -hmm. I felt a little dizzy, maybe, because I was nervous. I was simply following Rena's orders because I had no other choice. That was why I wasn't scared. But things were different from before. I had a weapon. I was in a far better position, but my heart was pounding. Humans are so strange. Ah, shit, what am I gonna do? What should I do, Keichi Mahabara? <gasps> Did I want to fight with Rena? The memo said the spray only reaches as far as one meter. One meter? That was basically a hand-to-hand -hand battle. That meant I only had one opportunity. I didn't have a second chance. The memo also said I'd need to aim for her face. That wasn't gonna be easy, shit. Besides, Rena was cautious. How could I stand directly in front of her within one meter? That's what I'd have to do if I was gonna have any chance of winning. Rena would do anything to reach her goal. She wouldn't even hesitate to kill, just like how I didn't. Of course, things were already extremely serious. 
an apology definitely wouldn't be enough, but at least there hadn't been any casualties. The more time passed, the more irritated Rena would get. She might demand something again, and she might kill someone that time to show how serious she was. Bad things had already taken place, but a tragedy hadn't occurred yet. But it was almost here. It wasn't very far at all. When I closed my eyes, I could easily picture Rena killing one classmate after another. After I killed Renner and Mion, my room was covered in blood. If she killed 20 people, the classroom would be a pool of it. If that happened, Renna would... She still wouldn't realize she was being delusional. She would rip out her own throat and die. That'd be too big a cross for her to carry, and one day she would remember and be saddened. Can we just address the fact that Keiichi uh, mm. believes that Renner is going to have a time loopy experience as well, because <gasps> he says die and then that she'll remember? He did. Interesting. She didn't need to go through that. I didn't want Rena to go through what I had to go through. I felt dizzy. It was a really long hallway. I didn't know the classroom was so far. With each step I took, my determination to fight Rena became stronger. Rena would be shocked to realize I betrayed her. But if she couldn't wake up from the nightmare on her own, someone else would have to wake her up. And her friends needed to be the ones to do that. Power of friendship. Power of... Oh, hello! Welcome back, Keichikun. Is that a radio in your pocket, or are you just excited to see me? Are you just some kind of... Some kind of government plant? Keiji, you working for them? You an alien? Yes. <gasps> Did Oisha san say anything? Ugh, what is this smell? As soon as I stepped into the classroom, I smelled something. Everyone had moved to one corner of the classroom. The smell reminded me of a gas station. Was it... <laughs> Gasoline? It smelled like gas! I wonder, was it gas? I saw a red gasoline container by Rena's feet. The cap was open. It was seemingly sturdy and made of metal. It said gasoline on the side, written in felt <laughs> marker. What? She it must have like spread gas. the gasoline Hold across on. the entire classroom, which was now filled with gasoline. <laughs> the smell of the gasoline was almost it giving me a gasoline like a gas scent station. headache. It, it smelled like a gas station, kind of like gasoline, no. and the gasoline container was there with the word gasoline on the side. <laughs> Ben, one could almost say that they never heard Ryukishi repeat himself. Look, I know that I should be used to my point, but it still gets me every goddamn time. Not every time. It gets Most me of far often, <laughs> far more often than you do. It gets me many times. That's true. Uh, no, it wasn't just in the classroom. The classmates were all soaked in gasoline, too. What? What were they soaked in? Uh, I believe it was petroleum. Oh, okay. How could she? That shit's flammable. I see. This is just like a hijacker holding a bomb. If the police were to rush in, she would burn the hostages. I didn't know where she got it, but she had a lighter in her left hand. Well, that's just... Okay, listen. If you're gonna yeah. douse a bunch of things in gasoline, do not light any flame <laughs> until the exact well, second <laughs> that you are comfortable <laughs> with everything blowing <laughs> with up. the explosion, yeah. Well, I mean, she has it in her head, and she doesn't have it open I sh or, or flicked on, so it's it's all it's all Gucci, right? She's like, I don't know. I mean, those things are flimmed. They go off for literally no reason. Dude. Those check off ran lighters. Fucking. <laughs> it's just bad technique. Oh, it's all right. It's her first time doing a hostage. That's true. It is. So doing a terrorism. Yeah. Rana, what do you think you're doing? Of course I won't actually do it. This is just insurance. I don't want to barbecue everybody either. Interesting choice of words. <laughs> Welcome to my barbecue. She's gone full Kafka. We gotta put her down. She's gone full Kafka. So I hope this will all just end as a little joke. Rena showed off the lighter. Obviously, she was trying to threaten me. I've heard about people committing suicide by setting themselves on fire. They poured gasoline on themselves and lighted a blaze. You might think that if it was extinguished right away, it wouldn't be that bad, but human skin is supposedly very delicate, and they say even 30% of a person's skin gets burned, it's enough to be fatal. Mm. If it was your entire body, it would result in death for sure. I had been put in a disadvantageous position. My weapon might take Rena's sight, but I couldn't stop her from using the lighter. She'd probably use it the moment she attacked. I didn't know if she realized it, but the kind of lighter she had would keep burning until the lid was closed. Therefore, all she'd have to do was light it and drop it to the floor. Great. In other words, my spray can wouldn't make Rena powerless at all. The last resort of Ishii San Gami had already lost all its power. Much not all. My goodness, how can he communicate that over the radio? How could he? How It'd could he impossible. possibly do this? How could he let Oishi know what's going on? What do you mean insurance? With those scrapbooks, Oishi San will convince the rest of the police. After that, their investigation will expose the conspiracy. Right? Do you really think those scrapbooks are enough? I know government people don't move nearly quickly enough. 
and I was thinking that if she didn't see any progress with the scrapbooks, she'd pressure the police by letting them know about the gasoline. Let's just trust Oishi-san for now. We should just wait to hear from him, okay? Yeah, that's right. Okay, then. Let me pick up where I left off. Anyway, those parasites became harmless with the passage of time, but some people didn't like that. Those people are the three families of Hinamazawa, therefore they are... I was simply telling everyone what she'd heard from Takano-san. I started mumbling so I could let Oishi-san know what was going on. What a smell, scattering a whole portable tank of gas. <laughs> I was pretending to mumble to myself so I could only say it very quietly. I wished I could say it louder, but that was probably impossible. I wasn't sure if Oishi-san could hear me. I thought of an idea that could find out whether or not they could hear me. It'd be nice if I heard a car honk. <laughs> oh, there's a sound Luma effect. Guy. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> Kumachan hold once quickly. Gasoline, huh? Shit. That explains the smell. I'm sure she's intending to use it to get what she wants. Nope. That was you. I'm sorry. I took your line. However, Ben. <gasps> we have points! Surely. I need to give points? a point to Ryuk. Do we get points for that? Nah. Oh, you're the worst. I mean, you're right. It, it was, was alternating. It was mildly obvious. You know what? It's fine. You can re read your line now. Yay! At least I get more lines. Gumajan, people usually mean an 18 liter tank when they say portable tank of gasoline, right? No, probably, but I'm not sure. Mmm. -hmm. Gumiyamagun, is there still someone from the first service here? Could you get him for me? I mean, I, I don't know. It's random dude. I don't, I don't know. I'm just gonna take it. Fuck it. You see, those cans have gasoline written on them. Do plastic kerosene cans have kerosene written on them? Yes. We don't want <laughs> to mix them up. The moop? All the fuel We don't want to mix them up! Have labels. Oh. Not too many people know this, but regular portable tanks can't hold gasoline. Gasoline, while common, is extremely flammable and it can be lit even with static electricity. You heard it here first, kids. Don't light gasoline on carpet. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Therefore, gasoline must be kept in special metal containers. Those are called carrying cans. So or... Get... What? Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, can <laughs> Jerry? Is Jerry? <laughs> is that how she smuggled the gas in? Yeah, because he was Jerry? a hostage oh! and all the gasoline was inside Jerry. Oh my god, it makes so much sense! Which means he was in fact already dead. <gasps> because unfortunately no, I don't think Jerry can breathe gasoline. But a zombie Jerry could hold that. Well, yeah, but that still means he's already dead. <laughs> no, but he's Tommy Jerry. I'm he sorry, Jerry. Jerry's dead. Tommy Jerry is best Jerry. Jerry is dead. Ah, oh, this timeline really is doomed. <laughs> so what my son called gasoline really is gasoline. No, they're different size carrying cans. Eighteen liter and five liter, I think. Five liter ones. Five liter ones are at the flat and shape, aren't they? Oh uh, yes. So red and flat with a handle. Kiji my boy called it a portable tank. You know? Do you think it's the 18 liter type? Or the type with tracks? Maybe he called it a portable tank because he wasn't familiar with the shape. But either way, if it's really gasoline, it's really dangerous. <laughs> gasoline burns when lit. That's it. That's but all what's we need to it know. even bigger threat than liquid gasoline on the fumes? When the gasoline fumes are lit on fire, they explode. Also, gasoline evaporates easily, even at freezing temperatures, it evaporates. And so, in other words... The only solution is to devoid all oxygen from the air. Makes sense. In other words, inside of the closed classroom, the fumes would fill the entire space. The classroom would then become a bomb itself. Um, John. Do you know anything about the glass for hazardous materials? No. I know gasoline fumes are dangerous, but I don't know any more than that. You will give the police training then. You'll miss hazardous material for a day. To prepare for the worst case scenario, I want to find out the difference in scale between the 18 liter and the 5 liter. Also, hold on. Doesn't yeah. Keiichi have an earpiece so he can hear Uishi? Why did he need 
them to honk a fucking horn when they can talk in his I ear. I don't know what happened. I know, it was weird. I thought he said, like, you can hear with this one and speak in the one in your pocket. But I guess he either hasn't equipped it or we just misread that completely. Yeah. Either way, he's, he, he can't hear us. He can't hear Oishi. Hey, no, I lost the old guy. Excuse me, could you call the station and see if the old guy from the forensics department, I call him old man Oishi, is still there. Oh, I thought, what's going on? The criminal request that you hug a boom, reach your pastor on! <laughs> I, I do this is that one guy! It's that one guy. It is that one guy. I don't remember his voice, That's though. That's right. It's been too long. He's, oh, he's, he's at like, the station, thus oh, he is Oishi. You're right. He is, he is old day. man Oishi. It's true. Oh, do on top of that, do. This isn't a laughing matter anymore. Not that I would laugh at anything anyway. Do you know about fourth class hazardous materials? Fourth class, huh? Oh, <laughs> if we had everyone here, we know everything about hazardous materials. Did they suspect spent gasoline or something? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. We dogged one of the hostages. Supposedly, that is a really callous way of saying that, but it's true. Supposedly, these suspects put gasoline throughout the classroom. How would you say that? I don't know. Just like, we gave, we gave this kid this like little thing so he could talk to us and so he could save the day. And we could save it with him and that's the plan. Now I think Uishi said that better. No! But one of hostages, get out of life. Well, it's Keiji like they're a card in the deck, Felix! Keiji is both a hostage, has a wireless bug bugged. on he's him, bugged. and it was given it by Uishi. It's accurate, it's just, you know, Uishi's a bit of a callous man, you know, he's a cold, sly detective. Supposedly these suspects went to gasoline throughout the classroom, but we don't know if it's from an 18 liter can or a 5 liter can. Can you tell me the worst case scenarios for both of them? How big is classroom? Well, let's see. Approximately 50 square meters. And the room is closed, huh? More than likely. I am sure the smell must be horrible. That's not good, Oishi. I had the feeling, Oishi. The classroom will blow up. Everyone in the class will be dead for sure. You mean in the case of the 18 liter? Fool, I'm talking about a 5 liter one. If I remember correctly, 4 liters is plenty enough to blow up an 8 by 8 meter room. Mm hmm. The, the, the policeman listening to my conversation on the side went pale. 8 by 8 meters meant a room that was 64 square meters. Only 4 liters are needed to blow that up, and at least 5 liters were scattered in the 50 square meter room. You know, he could have just said fire bad. Anyway. He could have, <laughs> that's not nearly dramatic enough. It's true. <laughs> In other words, the room has more than enough gasoline, huh? It's not good. And I do not hear this, but what would happen if it was an 18 liter can? <laughs> Let's see, to put it in your words, Oishi, the dealer's hand is Richie, a part so painful, Daniel, and Hakaka, and Toto, What do you mean? Buy man from the dealer, 24,000 points. The base distribution is 25,000 points, so there'll be one 1,000 point stick left. <laughs> Something like that. There may be one pillar left if you're lucky. My gosh. What's happened there? Yeah, whatever. My gosh, I don't want to do that. My gosh, I don't want that kind of Richie. I love how you're stopping and considering who's <laughs> talking when which? you're just giving them the same voice anyway. Look, they're very slightly different. They're very slightly different, but it's okay. It's <laughs> real Oishi, old man, I know. real. It's all right. We got that. It's fine. It doesn't matter. We're not high all the way to the bank. You should call the fire department and get the chemical unit ready. You'll need to have them deal with it after the incident is taken care of. Shit. I heard this little box, so if a fire engine shows up, the suspect will find out. I guess I'll have them get ready where she can't see them. Yeah, that's a good idea. You mentioned the bug, didn't you? Yes, I had the chance to come into contact with one of the hostages. I gave him a buck. That's how I found out about the gasoline. That's not good. There have been incidents where the sparks were trying devices, such as the one that you just gave that idiot, set gasoline on fire. You know, gasoline's flash point is about 300 degrees. Even setting electricity can easily cause an explosion. You've got to be kidding me. Why is such a dangerous liquid available to just about anybody? How the heck should I know? Tell that to the fire laws and automobile companies. Since it's drawn, the air isn't that dry, but just to be on the safe side, tell him to turn the listening device off. Come on, right? 
Yes, I was just a bit befuddled by the fact that we've spent so long giving him and get getting this device in that it's just ah, it's fucking, you should turn it off. Let's fucking turn it off. Yeah. Why don't you just, you know, tell Keichi the science, and then Keichi can go, hey Rena, you know that your shoes walking on the floor could set this all off, and she'll be like, oops. No, she'll be like, yeah, that's that's the oh, fucking price you pay for fighting with fate. Let's go. Damn it. Fate boys, let's go! Uishi-san, according to what I can hear through the bug, the suspect has a lighter. Nice. I mean, bad. That means even if my son used the pepper spray to stop her, he wouldn't be able to prevent her from igniting the gasoline. And we can't even use the bug anymore, damn it. Oh, Ishii! A, a lighter is really, really bad! Don't even let her play with it! The suspect may not know how dangerous gasoline is from hearing how much she spread, I, I don't think she knows anything about it! Oh, she knows everything uh, about it. Eh. Ahem. Ishii's back was covered with a cold sweat. Oh. He never even thought this would turn into such a serious matter. He didn't know how dangerous gasoline was. He didn't know because he'd never heard of cars exploding in car accidents. He knew it was dangerous, but he didn't know what it was capable of. Gasoline is more dangerous once it evaporates. Therefore, a burning car in an accident and gasoline fumes being ignited are at completely different levels. It's quite simple to understand if you think about how car engines work. Cars vaporize gasoline in the carburetor and let it explode in the engine cylinders. In other words, that little explosion in the engine is what gives cars the power to move. Learn about cars. Therefore, if you wanted more power, an engine needs to be bigger to create a bigger explosion. So if an engine cylinder was the size of a classroom, how much power would it create? Anyone with knowledge of engines would know. But a lot of people don't consider how dangerous evaporated gasoline is, because it's too familiar. So what you're telling me is that we need to make classroom-sized cars to drive around in. Yes. It sounds very convenient. Isn't that basically the uh, the premise of model engines? You know what? I haven't seen that movie, but yes. It's also books. <gasps> we need to read those books. Maybe we should. Is there a murder mystery in there I don't somewhere? think there is, unfortunately. Okay, fuck that then. 25 <laughs> hostages and one hostage taker. All 26 people were basically stuck inside a huge bomb. Furthermore, the suspect might accidentally set it off. If she were to pretend to light the lighter as a threat, that would be the end. All of the people around Uishi had gone pale. The classroom might explode at any moment. How could they save all the hostages? Especially when the criminal was living in her own delusion and the requests were something so unreal. What? Excuse me, I found a letter in the scrapbook! One of the policemen brought over a folded piece of paper. Uishi opened it while the others watched. He saw girlish handwriting on the paper. It's a message. He could tell this was written before she invaded the school. Dear Oishi Sama, if you are reading this letter, that means I'm at the final stage. I must have seized the school and held the students as hostages. I'm planning to appoint you as a negotiator, so please pretend to be threatened by me and become my contact with the outside. The first thing I want to tell you is that my enemy is the Son of Zaka family and also the aliens, who are pretending to be parasites that control the Son of Zaka family. The, the aliens? I didn't think you'd believe me if I brought up the aliens, so I didn't tell you about them until now, but when you read these scrapbooks, you will understand. The aliens came to Earth in UFOs in ancient times. You shut your damn mouth. I can see you clenching your teeth over there. You done. They landed in Onigafuchi Swamp. They used this village as their breeding grounds, and through that selected breeding, they widened their domain. They were successful, and now they're trying to invade the Earth. What the heck is this? All of the other policemen frowned at the letter. That they did. No, no, it's not surprising. I read the tech in those other sketchbooks and they were full of even stranger stories. Personally, I like the one about Dossi the best. The son of Zaki family, as well as all the village authorities, have been brainwashed by the aliens. The village's attempts to revive the cult of Oshiro-sama were actually part of the alien strategy to invade the Earth. The aliens are very clever. They don't let people realize they're being controlled. The area clinic must be their secret research center. Please conduct an investigation and expose their secret. Also, please check out the bottom of the swamp. The UFO must still be there. Also, capture all the relatives of the three families and take x-rays of their brains. You'll find hideous parasites inside of them. But please be careful. The aliens eliminate whoever finds out about them by replacing their hosts with a look-alike. That's how they have been in control in the village. 
Therefore, there may be already some aliens among the villagers. It's possible they will try to interfere with your investigation. As a matter of fact, there have been lookalikes of Mio Takano, Rigafruta, and me, Renaryugu. If you see any of those three, capture them immediately. That will be the proof of aliens existing among us. Mio Takano! Why did she think that? Oh, come on! <laughs> I'm so done with everything! Ah, uh, that's alright. I'm gonna give him a point for that one. Why?! What? Because they cut back to the car, but she wasn't on screen. Oh, whatever. As plausible, if dubious. It's very dubious. Du we give, we give Ryukushi a dubious point for that, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, Ryukushi, at least as far as I remember at this point, is extraordinarily far behind. Is so he, I'm, I'm happy to- Is he far behind? Are we winning for once? We're like 300 points in the lead. Damn! Off the editing. We're so good. Yeah, we did one absolutely absurd steal. I remember that one. Um, I was not happy with that here's one, the but thing, we did anyway. I'm going to just keep fishing out points to Ryukushi willy-nilly just to show off how far I'm in the not, lead we are. I'm Eventually not. it's going to bite me. He doesn't need him. It's going to bite me. This is when we find out he's actually a thousand points ahead. I wouldn't even be mad. Anyway. I'd just be surprised. Do you want to let's Kumachan? Do you like, you like no, Kumachan? No, no, it's fine. You can just keep You don't going. want to do any just Kumachan going. voice? Keep... Okay, fine. I know how much you love that voice. I do. Ah, I know. I told all of the phone that according to the result of the autopsy conducted by the lab over in Kivu Prefecture, the day of her death doesn't match up. Ah, you're talking about the mistake on our autopsy results. <laughs> I told her I didn't know why Miotekino was witness on the day of the festival when she died the night before. Mm hmm. I never thought she'd take it like this. Maybe I told her around a little bit too much. It's interesting that she included herself. Did she look in a mirror or something? One of the policemen spoke up. He was one of the pair who searched the garbage dump that night. Uh, I, I, can, I can understand that, remember? Hate this. Tonight, we looked for Rena Ryugu. Somebody said she was seen in Gogura. That's the one. That must be it. It was probably a bluff from the villagers, and she must have heard it somewhere and assumed there was another version of her walking around. So why did this need to be the policeman from the garbage dump? It just did. It just did, I guess. It just happened to be here, dude. Damn! Nostradamus was it? This is just like that. No matter what happens to her, everything sounds like it was predetermined. Reno Yugo would blame aliens if she was to trip and fall down now. Maybe she's coming up with all this crazy stuff so that once she's caught, she can use the insanity defense in court. No, this isn't about that she really does believe in that crazy stuff. She does from the bottom of her heart. I know that for sure. She truly believes in these stupid scrapbooks. Ah, uh, there's another letter. Let's see. P.S. I was poisoned yesterday with the same stuff that killed Tom Attack of Flesh Sand. I've been scratching my throat since then. I will probably have clawed out my throat open by tomorrow. If you can find the antidote when you investigate the area clinic, please bring it to me. Unless I'm one of them, you know, aliens that pretend to be me, in which case don't bring it to me. It sure is something. Yeah, if she believes... Oh. No, I fucked. No. I fucked with you. Yeah, there. you fucked with me. Why would you do this to me? It's specifically. Why would you do this to me? Specifically, so I could give points to Ryukishi. Why would you do this? I'm, I'm a, fucking I'm with me. Doing an inside job. You can't. Right? You can't do this to me. I'm insider trading this on these sure points. This show is something. Yeah, if she believes in alien stories. Maybe you can trick her with an antidote. But you may not find the antidote, or maybe it'll be too late by the time you do. Therefore, considering the time I have left, I will set 7 p.m. tonight as the deadline. Oh my god, we don't have long, Ben. From whatever the time is now. Well, we know that they, they were kidnapped at 1 p.m., so it'll be any time between now and then. If an, that's some scary music in the background. If an investigation doesn't take place and the antidote doesn't arrive by 7 p.m., I will choose to die with all the hostages by lighting the gasoline instead. 7 p.m.? What time is it now? It's a little before 6, says a character. Days are long nowadays. It doesn't get dark even in the evenings. It'll probably start to get dark around 7 p.m. We only have an hour. We, we only have an hour. Getting back to the old sprites on screen problem. <laughs> we only have an hour. No, it might explode before that shit. What can we do? The heck is she talking about? An alien invasion and she's trying to take the hostages with her. That's just crazy. It is. Yeah, that is absolutely crazy. We can't negotiate with her normally now, especially when she thinks she's absolutely sane. Rishi-san, look what comes next. Hmm? What? What? I'm planning to spread gasoline throughout the classroom. I'm sure you realize how dangerous that is. 
If anybody suggests Stallman in the room, please tell them exactly how bad an idea that would be. Also, the hostages are anchored down with U-shaped back locks. Even if those alien policemen rush in and kill me, they'd have to cut each lock. But if you try cutting them, you might create sparks, and therefore you need to completely ventilate the room first. In other words, it will take an extremely long time to rescue all the hostages from the classroom. Actually, I have a different explosive system set up other than the gasoline I spread. It's a very simple time bomb using gasoline and a kitchen timer. The kitchen timer provides electricity to set time, and I rip the tip off its plug so it'll create enough sparks to ignite the gasoline. I've already set the timer to 7 p.m. Even if I'm not around, there'll be an explosion at that time. If I know anything about kitchen timers, it could go off any <laughs> second. <laughs> yeah, famously unreliable. Oh my god. If the classroom isn't ventilated by that time, it'll explode too. I'm sorry to ask you like this, Oishi Sam, but please help me so we can avoid a tragedy. Please, let the three families know that me and Sonazaki, the successor of the head of the Sonazaki family, and Riga Frude, a mascot for the cult of Oshiosama, are in this classroom. If anybody from the three families helps you, I'm sure their conspiracy will be exposed by tonight. Alien invasion is going to happen very soon. Please, get going quickly. To my ally, I wish you sand. Ready for you, Goo. Smash! We should smash! We should do the scrapbooks to the ground! Damn it, how could she call me her ally? Is a kitchen timer like an alarm clock? No. That is... <laughs> In what way? In the fact that it counts down and makes a buzz? It's like, you know... The most... What? <laughs> Inane fucking question. <laughs> I wonder if in Japanese that question makes more sense. Like, if there's like a word I that hope mean so. multiple things. Because that is tell us, so. Tell us in the comments. Fucking tell us pointless. In the comments. Is a kitchen timer like some kind of stopwatch or like an alarm clock or like a, a timer, you know? The old appliances didn't have timers. A kitchen timer is a device that turns on appliances at given time. When you plug it in, it provides electricity at the same time, so the appliance will come on when you want it to. And with we some foreshadowed kind of this timer. with rice cookers, and that's why we have to point it out rather than just letting it go. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? <sighs> you're not gonna. You didn't want to. You just. I'm gonna, not gonna. I'm gonna, not gonna grace. You this weren't gonna with like voice. say that very facetiously. No. Nah. Okay. It doesn't deserve it. It's possible to use it to make a time bomb. I've never. Had Bad Using enough. a kitchen timer that show you something a girl would come up with. What? What? <laughs> what? Okay, Why that's, do that's we call my the electric company theory. and what turn the, fuck? the electricity off? What if the there's fuck? no power, the timer can't go off. Oh, oh, but that won't work. If the classroom became dark, she'd probably light her lighter. What the fuck, Ryukishi? Success, motherfucker. Look, I love you. I love you, Ryukishi. Mmm. -hmm. Maybe we I can give her a sleeping pill as an antidote, but it would have to take effect slowly. I'm sure she'll have a host to try it first. Be very careful. Understood. I'll get one ready. Mm. I need to talk to my boss son one more time. I have to tell him not to let the of you go play with the lighter. Of course, because he wouldn't be able to figure that out for himself when he's the one that told you that she had the lighter. <laughs> I also have to tell him to turn the bug off. No about that, by the way. Have you heard anything interesting? The suspect seems to be abusing a hostage. Oh, shit. I shit, shit! I think it's Mion Sonazaki. Oh, no. Sweet baby Mion. Stop it, Rena. Rena kept hitting Mion, who had her hands tied behind her back. Rena wasn't using her fist, but instead the handle of her hatchet. Hey, kun you promised me you wouldn't move. If you do, I'll be angry. <laughs> Rena's gaze intimidated me. Her eyes were full of madness. I could feel Rena's emotions boiling over on the inside. If I opposed her, she would easily cut Mion's arm off. Ugh. What I can't forgive is that you dug up the corpses and turned them into the police. I trusted you. I trusted you. Man, imagine thinking that the police had the corpses and working with the police all at the same time. Look, she's going a little... Look, she's a little bit over right now. She's not feeling good. <laughs> Rena hit Mion's face over and over. It wasn't just Mion's hands that were tied behind her. Her neck was also tied to a window frame with a bike lock. Oh. So there was no way that Mion could protect her face. I didn't know if her forehead was cut or if her nose was bleeding, but her face was covered in blood. Her blood got on the handle of the hatchet, and every time she got hit with it, more blood was smeared on her face. 
the handle of the hatchet could easily smash her forehead. Because of her position in the Sanazaki family, Mion couldn't say that she hid the bodies, and so all she could do was endure. However, Rena continued to attack her. Rena no longer had any restraint. She might even continue until Mion's front teeth were broken. Stop it, Rena. Haven't you done enough? I'll tell you the truth. So, Rena, please stop hitting her. The truth? <laughs> what is it, Keiji-kun? No, you can't. Keiji-kun. Everyone, please don't listen to what I'm about to say. I may say some disturbing stuff, but it isn't anything wrong. Yeah, it's not like Ren has been raving about the bodies or anything for the past however long. <laughs> it's fine. No one's going to know a thing, Keiji. Here's, the thing. here's the thing. If there was ever a time to talk about corpses being dug up in the middle of nowhere, it's when somebody's saying, I am going to kill you, little children. Look, this is okay. This is, this is, this this is, is small absurd. time. This is amazing. So please don't listen. Even if you hear it, forget that you did. Please. What are you going to tell me? Go on, Keichikun. It's not a complicated story. That was for your sake. We found out afterwards that the place you buried the bodies was going to be clear-cut this summer. So we thought we had to do something about it, and Mion hid them in a safer place. Use the word we. You told me the same story the other night. Didn't I tell you that was something Michan made up? Why would she lie? She wanted to help her friend. Mion did it to help you. That's a lie. I won't believe it. Why did you do that without talking to me then? Why did Mian even have to tell her? Mian was trying to be delicate. Mian did her best to try to hide what Rena did. Mian knew Rena was at her wit's end and that was why she did it in secret, but Rena didn't want to believe in her. It's not so, cage kun How contemptible of you, Mian, to even deceive him. I won't say anything about your tricks during the club activities, but this, I can't forgive you. I can't forgive you. I can't forgive you. I can't forgive you. Stop it! Don't hit Mian. Mian didn't do anything. I never knew having your hands tied behind your back was that scary. Mian got hit repeatedly with the handle of the hatchet. She could only endure. She couldn't even protect herself with her hands. I've never heard Rikushi repeat himself. Hey, is it true, Mi-chan? If so, why didn't you tell me? Can't you understand Mian's position? She has to follow certain rules as a member of the Sanazaki family. Oh, you've walked yourself in a circle there, Keiji. Yeah, you should trouble. be grateful for what she's done for you. I may have said it too aggressively. Rena turned around and glared at me. Oh, so is that? Oh, God. That's right, Keiji Kun. Mi Chan sold me out of the police because the circumstances surround the Sonazaka family. She sold out her friend. I was her friend. I really liked her. That was mean, Mi Chan. I really did like you so much. Why? How could you? <laughs> this was senseless. Rena cried as if being bullied, but she was the one doing the bullying. Normally, this would be. So odd as to be impossible, but I had seen this scene before. I liked you. I trusted you. As I cried, I beat her to death. Rena repeatedly begged me to trust her, yet I beat her to death. I know what it's like to be the one doing the beating. Stop. 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 Stop, Rena! Don't you realize what you're doing? You're hurting your friend with your own hands. I understand what you're feeling. I know you're sad because your friends betrayed you, right? But that's a misunderstanding. We didn't betray you, we've been thinking about you all this time. But she just couldn't see that. Even if she died, Rena probably wouldn't realize she made a terrible mistake. But someday, you'll realize. Even an insensitive guy like me realized, so Rena would realize it for sure. And that's when you'll feel even sadder, Rena. You'll remember this bloody me on one day. Then you'll realize you were the one who made her bloody, and you'll regret what you did. But I was the only one who could understand that because I remembered. There was no way for Rena to understand or realize that. I wondered if I was suffering the most of all. There was no way to avoid a tragedy. This was exactly the same tragedy, just with different actors. The main character was Renner instead of me, but it was the same thing. Where was I? I was in the audience now. I knew how this story ended, but I couldn't come onto the stage. Stop, Rena. Stop. Please, stop. Are you crying? What's wrong, Keiji Kun? I stood up slowly and walked towards Rena, just like what Rena did for me before with my arms open. Please, stop. Stop this, Rena. You may not know why now. You may not know why you have to stop now, but 
If you don't, you'll regret it someday. So please stop. Keiji Gun, I'll be mad if you don't move back to the wall. Rena's eyes went cold and she lifted the hatchet in her right hand. Don't, Keiji I'm okay. Mian told me, but with such a bloody face, how could she be? Are you going to hit me with that hatchet? If you come any closer, I will, without hesitation. I don't need you anymore, Keiji Kun, but I want to be with you until the end. So please, don't make me mad, okay? Okay? She sounded gentle, but her expression was telling me there really would be no hesitation, and it would crack my head open with the hatchet immediately. But who cares? If you're in my shoes, what do you think you'd do? <laughs> of course, I don't want to die, so I wouldn't oppose my opponent. If they had a weapon, I would be scared. That's a lie. I know. I know you're strong enough to give up your own life for the sake of your friend. It's my turn now. My turn to be strong. I'm just like you. I won't hesitate to give up my own life for my friends. If you want, I'll give that life to you. So stop this. If you want to trust your friend, stop hurting her. The same pain will attack you later, so stop. Nobody is trying to scare you. We're all thinking about you. Don't doubt that. Please believe it. Trust me. If you can come to trust me by smashing my head and go ahead and crush my head with the hatchet. I won't try to protect myself. Don't come any closer. If you do, I'll light this place up. Rena lifted the lighter overhead. You fool. How long are you going to dream about such crazy things? You already know that yourself, don't you? It's all just a bad dream. You want somebody to wake you up. I'm here. I'm here to wake you up from your nightmares. You're the one who has to wake up, Keiji-kun. Can't you believe that those aliens are trying to invade the village? You, you believed me back then. Are you doubting me again? Can't you trust me? Rena opened the lid of the lighter. I could tell her thumb was about to light it. Rena was prepared to die along with everyone else. Rena would die without knowing the truth. She would die believing it was the world that was crazy. She would die cursing everything in this world. This was the storyline of this tragedy, wasn't it? This was a theater from hell. What an interesting script. Who wrote it? A devil? <sighs> Shit. I won't let this happen. Don't underestimate Keiichi Mayabara, the original main character. <laughs> Don't think the same storyline will work again. I'll be taking over the script this time and I'm going to destroy it. I won't let this bad ending take place. I'm going to destroy their expectations. You're the one who doesn't trust me, Rena. Just trust me, shut up and trust me. This is all for your own sake. As the main character of the previous tragedy, I'm telling you this. You just shut up and listen to me. Fucking Ryukashi. What are you talking about, Keiichi-kun? Shut up and trust you. You're the one who doesn't trust me, Keiichi-kun. Why don't you believe me? Shut up! I know you're wrong. I know how you'll end up, so I know you're just gonna regret it in the future. I don't want you to finish your life without realizing what you've done. You just don't know how sad that is yet. I have no idea what you're talking about. Are you okay, Keiichi Kun? I was in a room full of gasoline, everyone's tied up, I'm gonna he's say fine. no. No, he's fine. Yeah, I bet. I bet you have no idea what I'm talking about. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the story of a pathetic guy. Oh. Once upon a time, there was a pathetic guy named Keiichi Mayabara. If this just quits and reboots on a Kakashi right I'll now, be so fucking I'll crazy. be <laughs> incredibly frustrated, but also no, very impressed. That'd be amazing. He had no complaints about his life and he spent every day having fun with his friends, but one day he started to doubt them. After a while, he started to doubt everything. He didn't notice how worried his friends were and he hurt them repeatedly. How sorrowful. They trusted each other, but they couldn't let each other know. Can you believe something as stupid as that actually happened? Then I beat you and me on. The metal bat to the point of death. But you begged me to trust you until your final moments. You didn't even try to protect your head. You just trusted me until your final moments, reaching your hands out to me. I didn't realize what you were doing and beat you to death anyway. You know how sinful that was? I bet you have no idea. That's why I have to make up for what I've done. I'm going to stop you, Rena. If you come any closer, I'll light the ladder. Just like you tried to save me with your life, I'm going to try save you, Rena. I still remember how magnificent you were when you died. You weren't even afraid of it. Oh, fuck. His words will reach him, she thought. These next words will make Keiji Kun realize. Trust me, Rena. You really can't go ahead and use 
explosion sound effects <laughs> for a hatchet. Shut your damn mouth. Shut your damn mouth. It seemed full of Shut explosives. You. This is not the time for a tangent, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> As Ren Ren hit my head with the hatchet, I crumbled down to the floor. She hit me with a handle, but my head was probably cut open. I felt the blood on my face. Poor Keichikun. It's not of your own will. The parasites that live in your brain are controlling you. And we should say we'll find the medicine for it. When he comes, I'll let you take the medicine first. Then you'll be free. You'll return to the Keichikun that I loved. Just hang in there for a little while longer, okay? Damn you, said the man with a hatchet in his fucking face. Yeah, dude. I heard a phone ringing in the teacher's office. Rena listened to the phone ring for a while, then realized it was for her. Rena tried to answer the phone in the classroom, but she couldn't figure out how to transfer the call, so she decided to answer it in the teacher's office instead. <gasps> a fatal mistake. I'm going to the office for a bit. Don't run away, okay? If any of you are missing, something terrible will happen to me, Chan, okay? Rena glared at everyone in the classroom, intimidating them, and then left. That's when I heard a honk from outside. I remembered the signal from earlier. Did Oishi san want to get in touch with me? I bent down and put the receiver earphone in my ear. Here we go. Get, can you hear me? Oh, come on. Boo! Uh, Where's Oishi? We get a point for that, surely. Okay, we can. Yeah! Uh, can you hear me? This is Kumigai from Okonomiya Station. Please cough if you can hear me. <laughs> no, there's one. No, there were two. There were two on screen. You looked away I know. For the no, second. I know. I saw two. I was, but he was like, cough. And he would cough twice. It's not good communication. That's fine. Very good. Please listen carefully. The gasoline the suspect spread everywhere is very dangerous. The classroom is filled with vaporized gasoline right now. It's like a bomb. Please don't aggravate ryugu sound and don't ever let her play with the lighter. Please don't provoke her anymore like you just did, okay? <laughs> ah, this bug is awful. It's possible for gasoline fumes to ignite at the slightest spark. Therefore, please turn the bug off after this communication. That's just to be on the safe side. Also, one last thing. According to the suspect's note, she has set a time bomb. A time bomb? Use the kitchen timer to make a simple time bomb and the classroom will explode if it goes off. I'm trying to get some sleeping pills ready to give her as an antidote. But we don't have much time left. According to her note, the timer is set for 7 p.m. I looked at the wall clock. It was 6.45 p.m. They took we 45... So much time! 45 <laughs> minutes for them to t tell oh him to turn God. the bug off when it's ah, fucking... We only have 15 minutes left! The bug doesn't matter at this point! <laughs> I could hear Rena screaming into the phone. Oh, I guess she's shouting at Yoishi. We should have known it was Kumagai. I suppose. Uh, it's fine. We've, we've got the point already. Oh, I can I can give it to you. No! I can... No, we got that point okay, fair okay, and square, right. okay? It's fair and no, square. Wait, wait, no, this is Rena, right. It's Rena. You, you read it. Oh, okay. Hurry up. Come on, you're wasting our time. Shh, 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 Come on, there's only 15 shh, shh, minutes left, man. I know, I know. We've got to hurry up. Hurry 15 up. minutes in like an hour. Here we go. Start the timer, everybody. No, the timer has already been set. Hurry up, Oishi Sand. I won't wait for even a second longer. As you can hear, Renaryugu is refusing to reset the timer. She's going to kill herself in 15 minutes. Mm. I remember thinking the same way as Rena. After I killed Rena and Mian, I knew the police would come. I thought someone would solve the mystery after I was dead. If that's what Rena was thinking, then she'd been planning to kill herself from the beginning. What do you want me to do? The sleeping pills should arrive soon, but if an explosion took place before we could negotiate, there would be no point. They want you to find the time bomb and disassemble it. You mean cutting the red and blue cords like in the movies? It's probably simpler than that. According to the suspect, you use a kitchen timer. It's not a battery-operated one, it's one of those ones you plug in. Looks like an alarm clock. Do you see anything in an outlet in the classroom? There's one outlet in the back and another at the front of the classroom. I checked, but I didn't see anything that was plugged in. Now I don't see anything. If an ignition was taking place somewhere, it shouldn't work. It must be somewhere in the classroom. No, I don't think so. The only cord coming from the hallway is the one for Rena's phone. Is it possible for the kitchen timer to be battery-operated? It's the type that's powered by electricity, as opposed to one that's powered by batteries. Yeah. <laughs> could it possibly be in another room? If there was a different room where she spread gasoline, then the timer could be in there. You telling me to check the whole school? In 15 minutes? Damn, I'm injured here, you know? <laughs> but if I stayed here, I'd die in 15 minutes. This wasn't a time to be pessimistic. Get out. This was probably my last chance to stop this tragedy from taking place in Casey. 750 seconds. Do the thing! Do the thing, Keiichi! She spread the gasoline while I went out to deliver the scrapbooks, so she must have done it in a fairly short time. I really didn't think she had enough time to spread it anywhere else other than the classroom. 
And where was the time bomb? We're doing everything we can here, so please help us. That's all. If you don't have any questions, I'll end the communication. Is there anything else? No, not really. Oh, wait, yeah, I do have one thing to say. Beep. <laughs> say up on it. What is it? Please tell Oishi that he should never have told Renner about my past. Hmm. If I come out of this alive, I'll punch him. So he better be prepared. Oh my god. Wait, two punches. <laughs> one for telling Renner about me and another for telling me about Renner. Yo! I understand. Oishi sounded as disappointed in himself for letting Renner Ryugu fool him. I'm sure I'll be happy to let you throw a punch or two. Oh. Is that it now? Yeah, I've already wasted a few minutes here. See ya. Fucking... Be safe. Like, one punch for each fucking timeline is perfect. Rena was still on the phone. Uishi-san was definitely trying to stall her. From what I could hear, it sounded like he's telling her that they investigated the main Sanazaki residence and found something awful in their secret basement or something like that. If you went too far, Rena would believe everything again. Mian was gonna get hit for lying. <gasps> Keiichi. Rika-chan and Sadako crawled up to me. Did you hear? Traps are my specialty. I can't let Renaissance do this to me. Oh. Sadako realized how serious the situation was as well. The lives of the hostages, including her own, were about to be taken. And she tried to remain strong. <sighs> Sadako, even if you die, please don't hate Rena. Rena's sick. She was just unfortunate enough to get this tragic disease, remember? We had so much fun together. Sadako, I... I still believe both you and Rena are my wonderful friends. So Mion, on the other hand! <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> she's lying there bleeding from the forehead. Oh. How can you say that uh, she's your friend after what she's done to Mion, son? Oh. But can't you understand, Sadako? Once a demon starts to act up inside, no matter how tragic the outcome, you just can't stop it. Oh. Sadako quietly hung her head. I didn't understand what Rika-chan was trying to say to Sadako, but maybe... <laughs> I believe in Renaissance. Fucking believe in these kids. There you go, Sadako. I hugged Sadako's head. Rikachan's arms were tied so she couldn't embrace Sadako, but she put her forehead closer to her in praise. Aww. Okay then, I'm asking the world's best trap expert. If you were to blow up this room, where would you set a time bomb? I fucking love this. I love this so much. Sadako getting her time to shine is like the, the fucking comedy trap person. Just like, so if you were to actually try to kill us, how would you do it? <laughs> Count on me. The device has to be connected to an outlet, huh? Yeah, that's right. But it could be somewhere else other than this room. It's possible she spread gasoline all over a different room and set the device there. No, I... Don't think she had enough time to do that. She had gasoline hidden close by and only spread it here. That was about all the time she had. I remember now. Rena told me last night that she had to prepare something for today. That means she had things ready since then, at least. Those are all the hints I got, huh? What a cruel mind-sweeping game. You can find it, Sadako. If you can't, there's no way I can. I'm wagering all my trust in you. Fuck yeah. Yeah, no fucking pressure. Nah, here, we, nah, here we go. You can do it, Sadako. You know how to save Rena. Please, find it. Uh, in that case, very well. I shall prove that Renaissance Trap is child's play compared to one of my own. Fuck. I'm gonna ask you one more time. If you were to blow up this room, where would you set a time bomb? <laughs> As again, if you were trying to kill us, Sadako how would you grinned do it? and then closed her eyes to concentrate. Uh, who are you people? Who are you people? Bivovo, uh, who's in charge here? Oh my god, what is happening? Several cars have arrived, producing several men. They went for the Okinobia station. One of the men was wearing a suit, despite the hot weather. He approached me. I am assuming this is Zoishi. A pushing Kumachi on the side. Hey, look who's here. Good to see you again, Otaka Kun from the prefectural headquarters. What's your mouth? I'm ranked much higher than your now, so don't address me so casually. Can I help you with something, Otaka-kun? I'm rather busy at the moment. You can't possibly be thinking about taking over this case. Who we'll approved that exactly? I did, Oishi-kun, says someone. The chief? Chief Oishi? Takasuki kun has informed me of the situation. He also told me that you started all this. You can go now. The troops will take over. The troops? Otaka-kun, you aren't going to storm the building, are you? I understand the risk, but we don't have any time left before the bomb goes off. You've taken too long, Oishi. We are here to take care of the mess you left behind. Just step back for a minute. 
I couldn't talk back if both the chief and the guy from the prefectural headquarters gave me an order. But they didn't. I do think we need to retract the Oishi rule back to where it belongs in the tips, because I, I feel like this is a bit too significant. <laughs> to you think fam- so? Yeah. Uh, it's also a bit too obvious where that was the, you know, the point. Okay. Right? Do you want to switch around? That? Do you want to take one of these notes? I then? will take Otaka. Okay. We'll have to figure out who was who then. Oishi san, who the heck is he? It's Otaka kun. A long time ago, he was showing off even though he was bad at Mahjong, so I taught him a lesson. Or maybe he's still holding a grudge from when I knocked him unconscious in that Kendo tournament. Obviously, we didn't get along. Give me the latest update, oishi Ooh, that's sexy. Are you serious about storming the school? We were about to settle this thing peacefully with some le- sleeping pills. What are you trying to accomplish here? It's too late for that. If I had another hour, that would be possible. Instead, a special unit from the Prefectural Police Department will move in. Your unit will be their backup. Damn. Chief, you know what's going on, don't you? That classroom itself has turned into a huge bomb. But even the classroom isn't the bomb we're scared of. It is the suspect, Renner Hugo. We finally calmed her down and found a way to settle this peacefully, and we're about to start that operation. I know we only have about 10 minutes, but I'll make sure this works. I'll continue negotiating. If it doesn't work, I'll be blown up. Then you can sit back and say, I told you so, okay? Oishikun, a special unit from the Prefectural Police Department isn't just any old unit. You've heard about the Second Company, haven't you? What's that, Oishi-san? Is the Second Company that well known? Do you remember about five years ago when the JRA hijacked that airplane flight 472? I've heard that special counter-terrorist units were put together in Tokyo and Osaka after that incident. So they really do exist. But why would a special unit from Osaka be here? Otaka smiled proudly. We just happened to be holding a training session with your prefectural police unit. We requested their help. <laughs> you haven't changed, have you? You have a bad tendency to escalate matters quickly. The company members exited the vehicles one after another and took position. They didn't move like policemen. Otaka-kun, are you really going to have a gunfight here? One shot is all it will take to trigger an explosion. See, the way that the arc should end right now mm-hmm. is he just says, I know, and Bam. shoots the window out and then and he blows yeah, up and then he black. puts his sunglasses on and walks away from the explosion mm-hmm. in slow motion. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I won't use firearms. They're using riot shields and riot guns. Those guns are not big guys at high pressure. We won't be using guns, but we will be using guns. There'll be no issue with explosions. Huh. Well, I've never heard of such convenient water guns. By the way, can that toy reach the classroom from across the schoolyard? You don't need to worry about that. You just move over and let us do our job. As I lifted my arms exaggeratedly, one elbow accidentally touched the car horn, which haunts. Of course, I did it on purpose. You're trying to get Keiji Maibara's attention? Of course. I just hope he heard it. What are you going to tell him now? They're probably thinking about breaking one of the windows with a grenade and then shooting tear gas into the room. They have no idea how serious Renoryugu is. Deadly serious. Even the noise of a window breaking could drive her over the edge. You're saying the special unit can't suppress her? Of course not. That's why we've been so careful. Eno Yugo has been intending to kill herself this whole time. It raid doesn't work on people who don't care about dying. We only have Mayabasa now. Oishi-san, here he is. Hmm. Hello, this is Oishi. If you can hear me, please cough. <laughs> Just Wait. one cough, you fool. This is an emergency. Please listen. I have a feeling it's not good news. Unfortunately, you are right. The prefectural police are getting involved. They're going to ruin literally everything we've worked for so far. There is a special unit about to break in. Hey, the only reason I haven't used my prepper spray is because that won't stop her from igniting the gas. The raid won't work. The prefectural police don't understand that Ryugo-san is prepared to die. They're assuming the lighter is just a threat and that she isn't really going to ignite the gas. They'll break in within five minutes or so. Please, take the lighter from Reno Ryugo before they move in. Is that in addition to your order to do something about the time bomb? Yes, that is right. You gotta be kidding me. You want me to take the lighter from Renner and do something about the time bomb all within five minutes? That's it? Come on. Keiji, you can do this. You got 1,500 seconds or so. I don't like math. Do the math. Oh, God. It's 300 seconds, Six, Ben. You know what? You could have given me three more seconds <laughs> to think about that. You know, whatever. It's fine. 
You're the only one we can count on, I am begging you. It's alright, we all know that math on recording is a bad idea, I so I had math. to step in. I hate math. How is it, Sadako? Can you think of something? So they've been sitting here for 15 minutes, just thinking? Yes. I have to check the hallway on the first floor. To check whether it's there or not. Uh, knowing Renaissance patterns, if it was the first floor, it would be there. If it was on the second floor, it would be there. I just have to check to see if there's a cord in the hallway on the first floor, right? It should be there. Uh, if Renaissance was in a normal state of mind, I know for certain, but with her being like this, I really cannot figure it out with her thought pattern right now. Okay, I'll do something. I won't even have time to think about it. I'll look into those two options myself. I don't want another tragedy. Your demon's down in hell. I bet you're just waiting for an amusing ending to unfold while eating some popcorn. I haven't eaten you, anything. God all damn day. you! Casey. The ending when Jerry dies and Keiji dies and, and the whole place blows up. You wanted this. You're the demon. Yeah, you're the demon here. If they I told me to I should happy. bring popcorn, at least I I don't bring food to these. I'm honestly sessions. I'm honestly shocked you don't have popcorn for this this session. It'd be can very I, in character can for I you. Can be honest? What? I don't like popcorn. Why not? It's fucking. It's it's just bland. What? It's pretty it's bland salt and that. uncomfortable in my mouth. It's fun to kind of chew through, though. It Is also it? makes an excellent projectile. That's the only thing you I want can to throw agree it at with. people. I just, you know? I just cannot get behind popcorn. Oh, yeah. If I was starving Look, in the I'm desert, just, I would eat popcorn. I'm just saying that if Keiji had a if bucket of popcorn and he threw it at Renner, he could knock the ladder out of her hand. You know, it's all yeah, the same. have to be a real hefty popcorn. Yeah, dude. You have to throw it with intense force. I won't let that happen. I'm going to change everything. Then I'm going to make you pick up your popcorn off the floor. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing I yep, don't have Felix. it. Felix, you'll make you pick something else off the floor. That's probably you, because you'll be crying. I know. I spoke to Renner. She continued on with her story about the aliens. Yeah, what is it? What's the matter, Cage Gun? Hey, didn't you hear something just now? N n no. Oh, no. Renner went quiet and looked around. Renner had become totally paranoid about everything. When she became worried, she couldn't ignore it. Really? Are uh, you sure, Cage Gun? Yeah, I'm sure I heard something. Like that mm. car horn, which I managed to hear inside the building, by the way. <laughs> it's not like that was very quiet or anything. You it could was... just point that out. You could just say, what a weird car horn. Mm. I knew she'd want to check it herself, but she really couldn't leave the room for something like that. Mm. So in that case, she'd have to ask me to check for her. And I must have been thinking the same thing. Kajikun, can you go check? I don't know. Rena gave me an order with a fake smile on her lips. Uh, yeah, okay. Renna watched me go out into the hallway. As I did, she spoke to me. Don't make me angry, okay? Trust me, I am your friend. Yeah, I trust you, I trust you. So don't betray me, okay? After being freed from Renner, I looked for a cord in a hurry. Go, go, go. I didn't even have five minutes. The office probably had more outlets than anywhere else. I headed for the teacher's office. Shit, where were the outlets? Unlike light switches, the outlets couldn't always be found near entrances. Damn it, why did the clock in the teacher's office have to make such a loud ticking noise? Don't worry, Keiichi will find it. Uh, Renaissance would, if I were Renaissance. Uh, if Renaissance was even more mistrusting than usual, where would she set the trap? A trap expert like myself ought to be able to discern that. Oh. Now what's this? I saw a plug inserted into the unit under the principal's desk, and I also saw a card extending under the door to the little reception room. There shouldn't have been any reason why a card had to be extended into that room. The reception room had an outlet of its own. I tiptoed over to the reception room and opened the door. <gasps> what was that? Squeak. Squeak! It's the sound of a spark being set off by the door's hinges. <laughs> Flame rushes out. The end. The door squeaked as I cracked it open a little. I poked my head inside the reception room. I saw the suspicious cord crossing the room and extending under the door to the hallway. I followed the cord through the reception room. I opened the door to the hallway and the cord was extending into the storage closet. The storage closet we used to hold the cleaning chemicals. I could smell them from here. The cord was extending into there. Oh God. I carefully opened the door and turned the light on. No. Oh. <laughs> the end. Oh, Why Casey, would you turn why? that on? This is fun. Oh my God. <laughs> He's trying to get us killed! <laughs> the cord was attached to another extension cord, and there was an alarm clock that didn't belong in there. Keiji stupidly turned on the light, I causing a spark of electricity and killing the everybody. Timer. So all I'd have to do was unplug the cord. Uh. I picked up the alarm clock. It looked like a normal alarm clock. Actually, it was a normal alarm clock. I remembered Kumigai calling it the kitchen timer. 
He said it was a bit like an alarm clock, but <laughs> this wasn't a bit like an alarm clock. It was an alarm clock. It was an alarm, alarm clock. It looked like an alarm clock. The yeah. alarm clock was battery operated one too. It's an alarm clock. The extension cord and there was nothing plugged into it. Into the alarm clock. Huh? What was this extension cord for? Why was this extending all the way from the teacher's office? Unplug it. Uh, no, Kichi san run! There we go. Sadako? Yeah. You're like, oh, Sadako, what are you doing here? That's the wrong place you've been tricked. A black shadow was covering me. I felt my body freeze. It was so frozen that I felt it was about to crack. I turned around slowly and saw someone holding a hatchet above their head. Uh, Here's Rena. I dropped the alarm <laughs> clock. It made a noise as it hit the ground. Why did you follow the extension cord and why did you have the alarm clock in your hands? Why, why did you? All the cells in my body were frozen. This was Rena's trap. Rena was suspicious of everyone, including me. This whole time she thought there was someone connected to the people outside. This was a trap to lure that person out. Only the people outside knew about the time bomb. I was told about that whole thing, and so I followed the extension cord and picked up the alarm clock. How stupid of me. Wait, Rena? <laughs> I trusted you, Cage again. I didn't. As soon as he turned the light switch on. How could you turn that fucking light switch on, you dumbass? Rena hit me with the backside of the hatchet earlier. Oh no. It was painful, but it didn't kill me. But this time, she was holding the hatchet the right way. It wouldn't just crack my forehead. It split my entire head open. Well. Rena lifted the hatchet mercilessly. She moved slowly as if everything was in slow motion. She almost looked divine. Maybe it really was holy. I was praying after all. God. Praying? What was I praying for? Fuck. I was praying for my life. For a miracle. Yeah! Oh shit! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Here she come! Here she come! It was so sudden I couldn't tell what happened. Rika-chan had jumped onto Rena from behind. Oh my I god. I didn't know what kind of weapon Rika-chan used, but Rena started moaning. It clearly hurt. I just that need brought to... me back to reality. I couldn't just watch them. I had to get the lighter from Rena. I have turned on the music. Oh! <laughs> Don't think you can wield me a force. I think. Oh my God! What's happening? Rena knew I was after the lighter. She closed her fingers around it tightly. Rika Chan was grabbing onto the arm. Rena was holding the hatchet in. I wanted to tell her to run, but thanks to Rika Chan, I could use both of my hands to get at the lighter. Oh! The lighter flew out of Rena's hand. It hit the hallway and dropped down to the floor. Oh my God! I this picked track. it up. The same moment I did, Rena managed to shake off Rika-chan. No! Keiji san I know now! I figured it out! I heard Sadako screaming from the classroom. Sadako had figured out where Rena hid the time bomb. I wanted to catch Rena, but I didn't have any time for that. I had to do something about the time bomb instead. Keiji, hurry up and go back to Sadako. Rika-chan had spread her arms, blocking Rena's path forward. So what are you doing? Just run! Keiji, this isn't the first time I've done this for you. Don't you remember? Huh? If I tried a little harder the previous time, you could have made it. So this time, you are going to make it. Just go! I didn't know what Rika-chan was talking about. But there was one thing I did know. Just like Renner and Mion were ready to give up their lives for their friends, and I was willing to give up mine, Rika-chan was prepared for that too. Therefore, telling Rika-chan to run was like telling her she wasn't my friend. And Fuck so, yeah! I will depend on my friend Rika-chan. Do it! Thank you, Rika-chan! Oh, it's Sadako. Keiji san, we're running out of time! Leaving it to Rika chan, I dash for the classroom. It's a team effort, boys! Let's do it! Oh shit! As soon as Rika heard Keiji's footsteps reach the classroom door, she sighed in relief. As she did, Rena's black shadow came ever closer. <laughs> That's great. That's just great. This isn't a club activity, you know? You'll be killed for real. You'll be killed by an angry Rena. <laughs> hmm. You're not afraid of me, are you? You're amazing, Rika-chan. Rika grabbed a mop as she ran from the storage closet. She picked it up and held it upside down like a spear. Rika's stance told Rena that she was ready to fight. Rika didn't look like a little girl anymore. She looked so brave that Rena was even startled by it. Boy, you really are amazing. You aren't afraid of being killed at all, huh? <laughs> hmm. Rika smiled cynically. Rika usually never smiled this way. That's untrue. 
Do you really think I would be afraid of death? I've experienced several hundred deaths up until now. Why should I be afraid of it all of a sudden? You, you are Rika-chan, are you? You're the one I met that night. Show yourself, alien. Where's the real Rika-chan? The real Rika? She's right here. Meep. Nipa star. <laughs> <laughs> the way you're looking down on me, that really is like Rika Chan. I get it. Oh, she was some as an alien. The fruit of family is descended from him, and therefore you're a descendant of aliens. <laughs> I'll crack open your head and drag out all the parasites in your brain. <laughs> Ran a racer, catch it, and charged at Rika with a scream. Yeah! One swing is all I need to smash your little head open. Rena looked like a beast charging towards its prey. Rika took a step backwards and lowered her body, preparing to counterattack. She did that with no hesitation. Even a minute is plenty. I'll play with you. Come on, hatchet girl. <laughs> Do you not get it, Kishi san? All the hints were already in place this morning! <gasps> uh, calm down, Seteko. Explain more slowly so I can understand. You need to take exactly 60 <laughs> seconds so that the bomb has gone off and no! then I will know where it is. No! Don't go off. It's simply if you just remember, come on, it's quite obvious when you do. Hey, something stinks in her, close the window, as somebody said. Jerry, it'll be hotter in here if we do that. <laughs> oh, I just, I just want to close the window as well. Oh, stop that shit. We'd been smelling gasoline coming from outdoors. There was no forestry service people in the office, so they weren't doing any work today. The smell wasn't coming from anything they were doing. We in other words, it was the smell of Renner's gasoline. We figured that it was a twist. Renner hid the gasoline near the classroom. She had it in a plastic container. You can't smell gasoline that's in a plastic container. So in other words, she had more gasoline ready than just in the container she used to spread it around the classroom. Mm -hmm. Where was this smell coming from? Was it coming from outside? Vaporized gasoline is heavier than air. It sinks. There's another hint other than that. Oh, shit. What? Our ball is missing. You hit it again, didn't you, Hojo? Why would I hide such a stupid thing if I was going to hide something I'd hide something better than that? <gasps> it's all coming together. Kids who love to play with their ball never <laughs> lose it. It should have been in the same place it always was, but it was gone. So that must mean Rennie used it for something. The gasoline was coming from above. A ball was missing, so maybe it was stuffed somewhere. Renaissance blocked the drain with the ball and poured gasoline in the drain canal. Where? On the roof of the second floor. The drain canal extended along the roof of the second floor and then came straight down to the ground. It was plugged and filled with gasoline. It was like a huge Molotov cocktail that extended from the ground to the roof of the second floor. Here we go. Molotov cocktail is not the example I would have used for that. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's a bunch of gas. Let's go. Furthermore, the drain canal ran by the classroom windows. If the canal exploded, the classroom would explode too. <laughs> Therefore, the time bomb must be. <gasps> I bet she ran an extension cord out the window. I bet she ran an extension cord out the second floor window. It's on the rooftop. Oh, damn. Let's go. I picked up a pair of scissors and cut Sadako's bonds. By the way, how did Rika Chan free herself from the rope? Fucking, she's the best. I apologize for not being thin enough to slip out myself. Aww. I grabbed Sadako's head. Sweet baby Sadako. Take care of the rest here. I'm going up to the roof. As I jumped out of the classroom, Sadako stopped me. Why? There's a timer! No, no! This is the bit! Here we go! Here we go! Get what? what is it? Oh my god! <laughs> Something silver sailed through the air. Yes! I caught it. It was a metal Yes! Bag. It was worth stopping for that! That's Nini's. <laughs> Make sure you give it back to me, okay? Oh my That's god! Sure thing. Thanks, Sadako. He has the symbolism in his hands! The metal bat fit right in my palm. I didn't even feel its weight. It really eased my mind. Oh my god. The name Satoshi was written on the handle. This was the bat that belonged to Sadako's brother, Satoshi. He has the symbolism! He was the victim of last year's uh, tragedy. You and I, where are the same? Uh, I won't let another tragedy take place. I'll treat this as a gift from you, who is waiting in the wings. Fuck yeah! Let's rip apart the script of this demonic tragedy With a bat. together. Let's go, Satoshi. Maybe beat the script to death would be better. It doesn't matter. Let's go. As I tried to run up the stairs, I heard a loud noise coming from the hallway by the oh, teacher's shit. office. I saw Rika-chan rolling on the floor. Damn, Rika-chan. You held out as long as you could. Oh, shit. Damn it. If my buddy were five years older. <laughs> Your next cage, kun Whoa! Ah, shit. I have to go. I have to get to the rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you figure it out? How did you? Still, I won't let you get up there. Rena's face looked unbelievably scary. She was ready to rip me apart if she caught me. In that case, just try me. 
I jumped up the stairs, skipping every other step. I turned on the bug in my pocket. What? I didn't have the time to put in the earphones. What? But it's some gas! Whatever. As Rana flew up the stairs, her foot got caught in a jump rope. You fucked! I had to click three times for that. <laughs> she stripped in three buckets <laughs> That's why! The result of Sadako's trap! Oh my god. <laughs> it was Sadako-chan, huh? <laughs> Sadako leaned against the wall and waved her index finger in a mocking gesture. Good fuck. <laughs> Oh my uh, god. You are pretty good, but you are about 300 million light years too early to go up against a trap expert like oh me! Oh my god. Sadako chan, light years are a unit of distance, not time. Wow, sounds like Ryukishi's been reading the Star Wars forums. <laughs> Smash! The fourth bucket hits Sadako on the head. Woo. I continued up to the rooftop. Renner ignored oh Sadako and ran god. after me. Uh, Ryukishi san, I did it! <laughs> I got the lighter! I know where the time bomb is. It's on the rooftop in the drain canal. I'm headed up there right now. Get up there. Do the thing. What's the time? Uh, Oishi san, is that it? Oishi grabbed the pair of binoculars from Kumagai and looked at the rain gutter on the rooftop. There was something like an alarm clock sitting there. The cord from the clock was extending into the second floor window. It was so obvious, but they didn't even notice until just then. Sadako was working hard to remove her classmates' restraints, but she couldn't do anything about the bike lock on Mion's neck. Just run, everyone. Forget about me. No man left behind! That doesn't sound like Neon san Why not act like a club president, even in a situation like this? <laughs> All you have to do as our president is to give me an order to undo this lock, okay? Oh. Sedeko reached for the back of her collar and produced a Ben hairpin. Sedeko opened the window, climbed onto the windowsill, and faced the bike lock that was restraining Neon. Everyone open their curtains in the windows, then run. Uh, but class pres, what about my bar, san Shut up, Jerry! That's no, I'm not fucking Jerry! I don't care! Jerry's the one on the floor over there! <laughs> we need to get Jerry! He's the one that matters! The police will help k -chan. You'll need to run as soon as possible. Ah, uh, did you unlock it already? Uh, to me, this type of lock is child's play. You bike lock. In fairness, bicycle U-locks are extraordinarily very easy, easy to pick. Are they? Well, there you go. Yeah. The binoculars were trained on the classroom. All the curtains were open as well as all the windows. The children, in turn, were all running out onto the schoolyard. Oishi pushed Otaka aside, then grabbed his radio and yelled into it. All units, go! Go, 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 go! Secure the hostages! The suspect is going up to the second floor, running after one of them! Hey, what are you doing? Otaka tried to grab the radio from Oishi, but Kumagai stepped in! Oh my god! Oishi could give me back the radio! <laughs> there was a dull noise and Otaka crumpled to the floor, convulsing! Oh, sorry, I guess my knee happened to hit your balls. Oh my god, Kumachan! I love him. The classroom is still filled with gasoline. Be very careful. You are forbidden from using any gas bombs or flares. Again, do not use gas bombs or flares. The whole place will blow. S support unit HQ. We secured 24 hostages. One is injured. Oh no. Uh, this is the assault unit. We're trying to take control of the first floor. We've got a problem. The electrical room is locked and we can't get in. You can't get in? Can't you break down the door? It's located directly opposite the classroom. The smell of gasoline is strong here. We might ignite the gas when breaking down the door. We'll await further orders. Shit. We could have just turned the power off. Forget the electrical room. Go secure the second floor. So, you know, roger that. Alpha, go, go, go! Uh, Takakun, what were you going to do if you failed to secure the electrical room? That is, that's what the special unit was for. This is the problem with your edge points. We'll just have to secure the clock's outlet now. Sniper unit to HQ. I can see a male hostage on the rooftop of the first floor. Oh shit. Oishi san, that's my barakun. You've been the speaker, my barakun. The clock is plugged into the big room on the second floor. I shook my head repeatedly. I couldn't do that. Rena was coming after me, so I couldn't head that way. What else could I do? The only way was to go up to the roof of the second floor and get the clock from there. Damn right. Nayabara-san, continue on to the roof of the second floor. I'll direct you from there. Rishi-san was telling me to go further up. Never heard Ryukushi repeat himself. Sadako no. only told me that it was on the rooftop of the second floor, and she didn't tell me where exactly. She only said it was in the drain canal. But maybe Rishi-san found it with his binoculars. Put my foot on the railing of the veranda and ran up to the rooftop. I'd never felt so light. I felt like I could lift myself with just two or three fingers. That's it. Keep going. It's at the furthest end of the drain pipe. You only have 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds would be plenty of time. <laughs> I could get there in half that. Fucking cagey. 
Over there. Was that it? It was! Sniper unit to HQ. I can see the suspect on the rooftop of the first floor. I wish you could fight, but you're using live ammo, aren't you? It's not tear gas or anything, is it? No, it's live ammunition. Mm. Use those in the military. Japanese police don't need anything like that. Mayabara-san! Mayabara-san, she's after you. Hurry! She'll be there soon. How many more seconds did I have? Ah, who cares? Ah! Oh, I slid down the roof and grabbed the kitchen timer that was sitting in the drain pipe, which was filled with gasoline. There was a cord with a copper wire attached to it. This was supposed to create sparks and start an explosion. The hands on the clock kept moving with the second hand trying to reach the minute hand. Seven, six, five, four, three... God damn it. Whoa! <laughs> I threw it to the ground. You threw it on the ground! And a moment later, I heard the noise of something breaking. <sighs> Did I do it? <laughs> <laughs> like, it explodes, sparks happen. Yeah, no. Assault unit to HQ. The time bomb has been stopped. Yes! Who is the best? We are! If we, son, we did it, we did it! Yeah! My best and good job! Your son certainly made me nervous. Cutting it so close isn't elegant, you know? <laughs> Not only policemen, but the children who are on their way to ambulances raise their voices in cheer. Especially Jerry. Oh, Ishi san there's a message from the fire department. The scene is still dangerous, so order all units to retreat immediately. Hmm. Isn't the time bomb gone, though? Though the ignition device is gone, it's still extremely dangerous. The lives of the assault unit might be at stake. Damn! What about my bird could not dare? Mm. That's right, he can jump. Can he jump off? He can jump. No, 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 here we go. According to the map, there's a flower bed by the school building. We'll tell him to jump there. Keiji wouldn't jump. Oishi to all units! Stop the operation! Fall back immediately! Fall back! But uh, 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 uh. Alpha here, roger that! Beta here, roger that! Fall back, fall back! Can you hear me, my person? Ryugo-san too! It's too dangerous to say that it might explode at any minute! There is a flower bed by the school building. Jump down there! A flower bed? Damn it, I can't see it from here! Use your eyes, Keiichi! But it didn't sound like I had enough time to be looking for it. I noticed a white hand at the edge of oh, the roof. Oh, damn! Followed by Rena's head. We hear boys. Rena slowly crawled up to the rooftop. I waited for her there. Nothing like two characters with metal weapons facing off on a rooftop I'm so surrounded by gasoline. <laughs> this, is it, this is when they all die. Don't, don't you even ruin this for me. That oh. would be such an elegant visual, just the two of them coming together. Clang together and explodes. I'm sure there's fan out of that. Anyway. I never thought you would find it. It was all for nothing. Rena scratched at her throat. The band-aids peeled off and her throat started to bleed. Ah, uh, don't do that. It's game over, Anna. You're we confronting each other on the rooftop of the second yes, floor. Yes, I know, that is the scene, yes. <laughs> this wasn't a club activity, but a real battle. Rena was glaring at me with hatred at first. But maybe because she had already given up, she started smiling wickedly. I heard the chorus of the Higurashi in the background as if to cool us down from the heat of battle. Nah. I didn't think we needed their service yet, though. We still strong, hot-blooded boys and girls. Yeah, if it was a board game, you'd have reached the goal and won, but this isn't a game. So this isn't a goal, it's it's a dead end. Ah, oh, shit, you don't give up, do you? Right now, you really are strong. You never give up. You fight until the bitter end. You keep believing until that point, too. Praise like that won't make me happy now. You ruin everything that I had risked my life for, can't you can? I was simply trying to protect our species from the aliens, and you ruined it. If humans go extinct, it'll be your fault, can't you can? That'll be recorded in history. I didn't mean to laugh, but I couldn't help it. My name would be written down in the history books of the aliens as the one who destroyed the human species. Somehow that sounded kind of cool. Yeah, it does. All right, no matter what you have to say, I've won this game. I've already won, and you just don't want to admit it. That's all. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Maybe that's not how it works. A game doesn't end when there's a winner. It ends when there's a loser. That means, for me, winning isn't enough. Hmm? What do you mean? Tap my shoulder with a metal bat, gesturing for Rena to come at me. Fuck yeah! I'm gonna make you understand that it's you a, lost. This goddamn music. I won't run or hide. Do you know why? According to the rules of our club, we don't run from our enemies. I'll prove to you that you've all more. Come Wait, on, Ben. You're gonna take. You know my what? Fucking... You know what? 
I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened there. I'm gonna there. give Ryukashi oh, 20 points for you know yours, your sins. Just get on it, just get on it. I was, look, I was too focused on the music. Get back on it. I'll prove to you that you've already lost, Rena. Hmm. Are you ready? Parasites and aliens? <laughs> How stupid. Who would believe in things like that these days? I can only laugh. <laughs> you never believed me in the first place, yet you pretended that you did. How dare you deceive me? I won't forgive you. I'll never forgive you. I don't care if you believe in those things, but I would never believe in anything that stupid. <laughs> if I did have to believe in anything like that, I'd rather believe in the buried treasures of Tokugawa Shogunate. But if you still wanted me to believe, don't you remember our club's rules? Whoever concedes victory is the correct one. There you go. Mm. Renner and I grinned at each other, and as we went around in circles on the rooftop, we both checked the distance between us. If you can take me down, I'll believe in your alien stories. I'll perform a mysterious dance every morning to call for UFOs to come and beam up livestock. But Rena, if I take you down, then I want you to be ready. <laughs> I don't think you even need to think further than that. I don't think you do. You will never defeat me. Rena came at me with a heavy strike. <sighs> There we go. I caught it easily with a metal bat. Looked like there were some sparks. This is finally getting interesting. <laughs> hey, maybe you shouldn't say that yet. You might be wrong, you know. When I went through a whole lot of fierce battles in our club, I learned something. I learned about myself. Now I know what I need to bring out my ultimate power. Oh my god. He's just, come on. Really? I wonder what it is. I wonder. <laughs> Rena, your hatchet can be a powerful weapon, but my metal bat is as powerful as your hatchet. Sure, it doesn't have a blade, but it reaches farther and it's easy to handle. Because it's got a, it's got a, it's got a good handle. So yeah, it's, dude. Shit. It's a good base I won't be going for a defensive battle. I'm going to fight you face to face and I'm going to defeat you. I'm sure I'm stronger than you physically, but you're better at drawing out your true potential, Rena. In other words, we're equally matched. Yeah, this is great. I don't need to hold back at all. So what are you gonna do after you beat me? Oh my god. Nope, oh, we're good. Take that, that, and that. <laughs> hmm, I think I might have the upper hand here. <sighs> I'm just warming up. Just you wait and see. Wait and see what I do after I take you down. We've both put a lot of chips on the pile. <sighs> Prepare yourself for having to make a big payout. <laughs> Aren't you counting your chickens before they've hatched? Your bluffing is just pathetic. <laughs> Scene is really let down by the visual novel medium's extraordinary slow pace. That's alright. Let's keep going. <laughs> you don't get it, do you? <sighs> my strength increases in proportion to my reward, don't you know? <sighs> Let's see. Huh? You'll be my personal maid. Starting from the moment I wake up until I go to sleep at night, you'll serve me all day, every day. With Coach's help, you'll be wearing a different costume every day. Wait until I go to sleep at night? What if I make it so you won't let me sleep instead? Inappropriate. Uh, how about that? Inappropriate, Keiichi, you motherfucker. <laughs> That's some like you, Keiichi Kun. No, no thank you. Actually, I'll win and make you my... Servant. Servant. You're gonna hurry up. Just We're gonna click. read this at an... No, I'm doing this on purpose. We're going... Rapid fire! Okay. <laughs> we both laughed like crazy people as we struck at each other. It was strange how much fun it was becoming. <laughs> Renner and I were trying to kill each other, and yet it was a blast. Oh, sparks were flying. We could get seriously injured. If we fell off the rooftop, we'd break our bones, and yet that was so much fun. I'd been mourning and crying all day today while Renner terrified me. How did all that turn into this? Two of us can't be serious even if we try. Even with sparks flying, we can only goof around. Too bad. That's not me. I like being elegant and graceful. You can have fun goofing around by yourself, Keiji Kun. And his next strike came at a strange angle, but I managed to deflect it. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's too weak. You're done. <laughs> Finally, I'm all warmed up. This is just a warm up, right? Huh? Ah, oh, stupid, this isn't even a warm-up. This is like taking a walk. Hey, you're all sweaty. 
<laughs> Instead of sweat, you'll be covered in your own blood. son, <laughs> jump off! Come on, jump! He isn't even listening to us. He's so into it that he can't even hear anything. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Get away! I'll take a point. Get out of a point! Who is he, son? Mm. Nah, nah, sorry, what is it? What do you mean, what is it? We have to figure out a way to rescue him. Wish he couldn't figure out why he was distracted. Considering the seriousness of the situation, he was engrossed in watching the two of them fight with the sunset behind them. But Wishy wasn't the only one. Everyone watching was captivated by their battle on the rooftop. At that moment, a sudden loud voice broke the silence. Why am I so hanging in there? Careful, don't fall! The students were about to climb onto the ambulance, were cheering him on. Mion was being loaded onto a stretcher with bandages around her head, but even she sat up, captivated she was by Renna and Keiichi's duel. She gave a big thumbs up to her. Our once happy days were supposed to have been shattered due to a series of misunderstandings. They were supposed to be irretrievable, but... <sighs> Why? Why did I feel this way? This was such a close game, but it wouldn't be fun to stay in a stalemate forever. Renna and I kicked at each other with perfect timing and increased the distance between us. Hey, this is a blast. What do you think, Rana? Isn't this just the best? <laughs> I've been having fun since the very beginning. But it'll be even more fun to split your head open, cage your gun. Split it open! Wow, that's dangerous over here. What? Wow, that's dangerous over here. Over here, come back over here. Let's use more space. Something like this doesn't happen too often. Let's enjoy it as much as we can. Pretty sure that was cagey. Yeah. yeah, I think so, but yeah. whatever. All right, fair enough. <laughs> it's to make a great picture. Look, there's a beautiful moon behind us. I was us. told it was the sun I feel lied to. It's both. And now it's suddenly nighttime. Yeah, Congratulations, we switched everyone. Tonight. We switched tonight. Such a fantastical scene. The two people were fighting on the rooftop of the school building with the moon behind them. It was almost unbelievable. All the policemen and children looked at that mysterious and fantastical scene from a distance, completely entranced. Everyone was thinking the same thing, but nobody said anything. Why don't we just light the building on fire? No, why Sorry, does it look why like, they're, it having look like they're having fun? Why does it look like they're having fun? Getting all fired up in a breeze this cool reminds me of the Watanagashi Festival. Oh, sorry, I said that wrong. The Watanagashi Festival. I don't really like to sit back and enjoy the cool of the evening in silence. When the moon comes up, I turn into an animal. <laughs> all us club members went crazy on the night of the Watanagashi. The mayor scolded us by the end of it, but we laughed at each other and promised to do the same thing again next year. Going crazy on the moon, huh? It sounds cool, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe we're already crazy. Yeah, I feel the same. We're having fun trying to kill each other. We must be mad already. This must be what insanity is like. Some people ha say the moon has the power to arouse passions in people. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. One thing that's for sure is that even if it were a new moon tonight, we would still feel the same way. As our surroundings got darker, the sparks we'd create with each hit started to look like fireflies. You know, isn't there gasoline in the drain pipe nearby? <laughs> Who cares? If an explosion happens, it happens. Hey, what are you doing? Are you getting too sweaty to hold the bat? <laughs> Why don't you take a break and dry your hands off? I'll split your head open while you do that, though. <laughs> That's a good one. Isn't your skirt clinging to your legs? You can take it off if you want. God damn it, KG. I just watched... I'll just watch you instead of attacking. God damn it, Keiji! Really? <laughs> then I'll give you a good blow to the head while you're chomping by my legs. <laughs> this really is so much fun, isn't it, Renna? Yep, it sure is. We flew, we danced. We struck, we laughed. We stepped back once in a while to catch a breath and then charged at each other and let the sparks fly. We aimed at each other as we went around in circles on the rooftop of the school, our special stage. Renner and I were all sweaty, but we weren't exhausted yet. The beads of sweat rolling down my body just tickled me. We exchanged furious blows one after the other. Neither of us was at an advantage or a disadvantage. Neither of us exulted in victory or raged in defeat. The battle with Renna was in itself fun. It was like a dance. A dance I couldn't dance by myself. It was a dance I could only dance with someone with whom I was equally matched. 
Didn't you think the same thing when we did the club activity with the whole clash? The day we jeweled with water guns? Yeah, I did. We wanted we to fight like this, this again. again. As we thought that way on the rooftop, our classmates down below must have thought the same. Our fight was so pure and passionate that everyone thought the same thing. We want to join them. Hmm. It was the same back then. We were using water guns, but we did the same thing. But this is far more fun. I don't have to worry about how much water I have left in my gun. <laughs> yeah, we can't create spots with water guns. <laughs> we couldn't strike at each other like this either. We were both breathing hard, waiting for the right timing to take a step forward. In the midst of that, we grinned at each other. <sighs> oh, this is exactly what I said then, but I'm gonna say it again. Okay then, I'll respond just the same. We both smiled wickedly in the same moment. This is so much fun! I don't even want to end this! <laughs> don't hate me if you lose. No, I won't. I'd hate myself for ending this game. <laughs> but I know I wouldn't be the one to cry in the end. Definitely flip that. Oh. I don't know about that. Your feet are getting weak as if they're made of straw. Ah, shut up. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm getting a bit tired of this scene. It's a little bit long, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. I'm still enjoying it, but Everyone it's a little bit long. I am not, I'm past that point. Everyone was captivated by our fight. They were swept up in our fight. We both had weapons. Weapons deadly enough to seriously hurt one another. But we were both perfectly matched. And neither one of us could hit the other yet. Why did they look so happy? This was just ridiculous. All the people below are just watching this fight on the rooftop with the beautiful moon as a backdrop. You could literally cut out, like, entire just chunks of this Look, scene. let's push to the end. Let's Nothing get to the end would of the change. story. Let's get to the end story. Not even the police could stop them. This was impossible. This battle was absurd and absolutely impossible. Gage is on. Try to stay in the middle of the roof. Use the height to your advantage. I think oh. that was Sadako, but whatever. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's fine. fine. It's Why don't we say the line? Oh, Sadako and some of her no, classmates no, cheered no, Kishion. You're the worst. There You're, breaking You're breaking everything. You're breaking every rule. To them, to them it this was, was no longer a fight, fight to the, the death. death. It, it was, was just, just the second round of their water gun battle. Fuck! A club activity is a club activity, and a game is a game. This was just the second round, so nobody would die. Even though, Even though they, they had, had real weapons, weapons nobody thought they would get hurt. hurt. Rika wasn't cheering, she, she was, was looking just looking up at the rooftop. rooftop. I've never seen anything like this before. Rika, Rika thought, thought to herself. herself. She, she thought Keiji could, could win, not, not just, just against Rena. Rika, Rika thought Keiji could, could even destroy the walls of the maze of tragedies, tragedies that had, had no exit. exit. But the snipers do this, so speak this try to harm the hostage. Wait, it's not, no. It's Sartaka. Definitely not this nerd. You're losing us so many points. Oh man. my god, just talk! Two just points. take your line! As Otaki yelled into the radio, Mion screamed for him to Wait, stop. Wait, You son of a bitch. No, no, don't shoot Renna. Renna isn't crazy anymore. She isn't who she was earlier. That's a different Renna, so please don't shoot her. What do you mean she's different? Look, she's swinging around that weapon. She's trying to kill it. Unless we shoot her down, the hostage is in danger. Can you say a roo for me in that voice? No. Oh, come on! No, don't shoot at Renna. If you shoot Renna, K-chan will kill you for sure. I can guarantee it. <laughs> Why would he kill me? Because he loves her. They aren't trying to kill each other. They're just having fun creating sparks. Can't you see? Uh, K-chan is taking... K-chan is talking to her too. He's telling her that they're equal. That means she can trust him more than anyone. K-chan will wake Renna up. No, he's already waking her up. Renna's nightmare is almost over. Keiji Kun, you're the best. I don't even want to kill you anymore. A world without you would be so boring. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the compliment, I appreciate it. Oh, what's going to happen in the world, huh? Aren't aliens going to try and invade it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think I care about aliens or parasites anymore. If the world's going to perish, go ahead and perish. Who cares about the conspiracy of the three families anyway? That's right, even if a meteor hits the Earth tomorrow. Nothing could be more fun than this moment. Hey, aren't you supposed to die tonight due to some poison? You sure don't look like you only have a few hours left to live. <laughs> That's right. I completely forgot about that. I'm supposed to claw up my throat and die tonight. Hey, that's the scenario you came up with, don't forget. Come on, scratch your throat once in a while at least. <laughs> hey, I know it doesn't itch anymore, does it? Definitely doesn't. This is more fun than scratching your throat could ever be. 
Yeah, this dance of ours really is way more fun. I wished it would never end, but my body was screaming. I was breathing hard and felt dizzy from lack of oxygen. My upper body felt light as a piece of paper as if even a slight breeze could take me away. It really had been a blast, but I needed to end it soon. I felt the same sadness as in that water gun fight. Back then it had been declared a draw. I wonder what'll happen this time. Here we go, boys. Who knows? But one thing is for certain. What? I love doing this with you. Me too. <laughs> I jumped backwards and slammed the roof with my bat. Damn! The sound was as intense as a huge drum, and the noise woke up the people who were captivated by our fight. The silence returned, and the chorus of the Higurashi filled the air. Okay, let's pause for a moment. Sure. Let's end this with one more strike. We started to move slowly and increased the distance between us. Everyone realized it. This fight was ending very soon. Okay, this is it. I'll ask you one more time. Hmm? What is it? <laughs> You're betting something on this, right? Isn't that why you were fighting? I, I did? <laughs> Sorry, I... I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> You're hopeless. Okay, listen carefully. If I win, you'll become my personal maid and serve me every day. You'll have intru have to... You'll have introduced me to others as your God master. fucking damn it, translated people. <laughs> My uniform better be cute. Of course it will. There'll be a variety of uniforms, ranging from old-fashioned ones to ones that are a little dangerous. They'll be custom-made so they'll fit you perfectly. How about that? <laughs> My goodness. I, I don't intend to lose, but that could be fun somehow. <laughs> if you win, Rena, I pause for a moment. If you win, I'll believe your stories. Rena was happy until just a moment ago, but that expression was suddenly wiped from her face. Aliens are invading the Earth, and we have parasites in our brains. The Sanazaki family is pulling the strings. They're researching the parasites in secret, and aliens will be in control of the world starting tomorrow. I'll believe that. Also, since you're dying tonight, I'll make sure you go peacefully. So don't worry. It's not fun if I win, is it? Your reward sounds a lot more fun, Keichikun. Well, what can I do? You did all this because of what I just said, right? Yeah, I... I guess. Sorry, I, I almost forgot. Rena smiled sadly for a moment, but soon the expression was wiped off her face, too. I'm gonna win no matter what. I want my personal maid. Oh. Boo, boo. It's not fun if I win. Then do you want to change it? What do you want? Finally, Rena smiled happily again. The breeze dried our sweat. It was a good feeling. We no longer went crazy even with the moon out. We could finally enjoy the coolness of the evening. It'd be so nice if we could just lie down on our backs and gaze at the moon. Still smiling a little, Rena spoke. I... Uh, I want the same reward as yours, Keijikun. What? You want me to be your maid? That's something. You don't have to be my maid, but the rest is the same. I want you to say good morning to me every morning, good night every night. I want you to treat me well let me play around all the time. <laughs> I, I guess no matter who wins, we'll always be together. We'll be together, but the one who gets the special treatment is different. <laughs> 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 Why am I fighting with someone I like so much? I don't know. Why are we on the rooftop? Why did we even come up here in the first place? <laughs> I don't know. I... I forgot. Maybe we're both airheads. That's why we floated up here. <laughs> yep, we're airhead buddies. We're buddies, all right. <laughs> well then, shall we get started? I don't want it to cool down too much. You're right. We better finish up before it gets too cold. We readied our weapons and took stances. I, uh, I was going to suggest that we stop this. I, I really was. I shook my head slowly. No. We have to finish this, otherwise it won't end. Our fight won't end. We can't quit. We have to bring it to an end. Uh, this isn't right. It's possible that no matter who wins or loses, there, well, there'll be no re there'll be no reward. Even if that happens, we shouldn't hate each other. So I'm gonna tell you this now. What? It was fun. Huh. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Rena. Even if one of us dies, we'll see the other again. And when we do, 
We'll have fun in a normal way. We'll laugh together in a normal way. And we'll fall in love in a normal way. We won't doubt each other. We'll trust each other. And we'll meet again, right? For sure, right? Yeah, for sure. Tears appeared in Rena's eyes. I noticed I was about to break down too. Okay, you ready? There was no signal, but we stepped forward at the same time. Our shadows jumped in the moonlight. We were fighting so viciously earlier, but now it's just like we were moving very slowly. We must have looked like a shadow play. Everyone was watching the shadows dance. Rena's shadow hit my metal bat violently. As a result, I let go of it. The metal bat bounced once off the roof, then rolled down to the schoolyard. Mm. I lost my weapon. It was Rena's chance, of course. She wouldn't miss it. I was lying flat on the roof, and Rena got on top of me. Rena's knees were holding down my arms, and there was no way for me to fight back. The moon was divided in two. The shadow of Rena's hatchet had split the moon right down the middle. This was the end. Ah, shit. That was good. Can't even, even pull my arms away. Hey, uh, Keiji Kern. It's over, right? Not yet. It's not over until you swing down your hatchet. I don't wanna. Oh. I don't want to. I don't want to. Rena's arms were still raised, but tears were pouring from her eyes. What happened? What went wrong? I loved everybody, and I trusted everybody. When did I start to doubt them? I don't know why I'm doing this to you. I don't know why. Why am I doing this to people? People I love so much. You... You realized it. You realized it in this world. I can't believe myself. Every day was so much fun, but why? Why? I didn't have any complaints. I didn't worry about anything. So why did I try to destroy everything with my own two hands? Rena, you're incredible. After I killed you and Mion, I didn't realize I had done anything wrong, so I left a note and called Oishi-san. I still believe that someone else was at fault. Until, I mean, even after I was dead. I didn't even notice I had sinned. How sad it was to kill my friends because of a little misunderstanding, even when they were trying to help me. And how painful it was not to realize it was a sin. Therefore, you're amazing, Rena. You didn't kill any of your friends. You came to your senses before you committed a sin. <laughs> You're incredible, Rena. Just incredible. You're totally different from me. Rena stood up slowly and lowered a hatchet. I hurt my friend. I hurt me, Chan. Just apologize to her. Personally, I appreciate the wounds will help me tell the twins apart. I've already killed. Huh? Oh, no, you haven't. Who'd you kill? Rena Mamiya and, and Tepe Hojo. Ah, those two. I thought it was right to kill them. But the day I killed them, the world started to go crazy. Did that mean that it was wrong to kill them? I don't know if it was right or wrong, but it wasn't the best thing you could have done. What do you mean the best thing? Don't you know? I grabbed Rena's head and embraced her. Oh. Then I told her. I told her something so simple. So simple that anyone could think of it. But Rena didn't do it. I didn't do it either back then. If you're in danger, or you feel like doubting others, or something sad happens, it was so simple. You should talk to your friends. That's right. You're right. Uh, uh. Rena cried in my arms for a while. She cried about the wrong choices she made at the very beginning. The choice couldn't have been hard to see. I'm sure it was something that was within her grasp. How stupid it was to worry about it by herself. She had friends. She had friends whom she trusted. Why did she think she couldn't talk to her friends about it? I was wrong. Why didn't I talk about it? Everybody trusted me, so why didn't I trust them? I was the same way before. That's why I won't laugh at you. But you realized it. You realized it a lot sooner than I did. We will trust each other. We'll never doubt our friends. We'll rely on each other. We'll talk to each other and help each other. That's why friends are always happy. And why we can endure anything together. Okay, Rana. Why don't we respond to the curtain call? This is really the end of everything. 
What do you mean by the curtain call? What do you mean? Well, I was just talking to myself. Come on. We stood up together holding hands. The moon was hanging behind us. When I nodded, Rena threw away her hatchet. Disappeared into the darkness below. Oh, and I spoke to the audience in hell. The demons who weren't expecting this ending. I was proclaiming victory. That's all for tonight. We overcame this tragedy. We'll never doubt each other again. We'll be united forever. No matter what disaster might befall us, don't think we'll ever yield. Who cares about that tragedy? Who cares about disaster? Even if the script is written by demons, we'll tear the whole thing to pieces. There we go. <laughs> Motherfucking Keiichi. The incident at the Forest Service field office in Amizawa. It's you want to scroll slow. a bit faster there? <laughs> <laughs> is this as like, slow as it normally is? At least I'm not in a hurry. No, this, this is so this slow. This is very slow. I love this. Oh Come my on. god. Let's yeah, man, it's uh, June 25th. Stand up. Stand up. Why? Stand up. Put speakers on. We can hear it. What are you doing? Let's stand, stand it up. Why? Stand Why are we up. standing up? So we can scream. scream but I need to read what it says. Yeah, I know. You can read it. Stand up, man. Midday, June 25th, the 58th year of the Shire! Woo! Location! You know what I'm saying? Yeah! You know what I'm saying? Yeah! X-Chime! What the x I don't know what that means! <laughs> it's all the first service! They got it right that time! Yeah! yeah. This, woo! Somebody on June 25th, the suspect, Rita Raina, broke into the forest, served the she office did. in yeah, Arizona. Did. She forced away the class from the school, housed with the office company, yeah. she's taking 25 mil hostage. Yeah. This has to be scattered right. around a large yeah. quantity of gasoline. Oh gasoline to hell the school house for oh. seven hours. Oh, the situation yes. remained in a deadlock. I uh, like the bottom of the time. But at 1845, someone was resisting for the building. At the same time, I thought she had the first time to place the moment. Oh, <laughs> the my goodness. I'm just going Rescued. Oh. The lady has a flight of the roof but after brief without so the suspect good. engagement close come out in oh, 1910. She agreed to disarm and surrender free the fire hostage. Like My legs hurt. There's still Why someone from the gym. The gym yesterday. The gym yesterday. Casually four minor injuries for his lucky man. Casually by the suspect around noon that day. She escaped. At 6.45 and was taken to safety. The suspect put a minor injury during the fight. But in Rico, she was casually by the suspect around noon that day. She was at 6.45 and was taken to I thought they had no, seconds no. left. No, no. Just said it goes catch him, but it says we're at noon. These are all the damn goddamn same thing. Why are they all the same? Why are they all the same? Seconds left. Seconds left. Around noon that day, she's getting six point five seconds. The entire fight was she not fell. ten she minutes. Fell. She fell. She fell and suffered minor injuries to her escape. My vacation she was captured by the suspect around the same fucking time. Because they're all the same. He was released by the suspect in 1910. That's different. Okay. He received minor injuries when he came to combat with the suspect. Combat. Oh my god. A Ryugarana. She decided. And surrendered to the police in 1910 oh and was subsequently oh. arrested. She was taken to the Okinawa police station yes, to question. Police station. She admitted to the outline of the bomb. There has been some dispute with the accountability of the suspect during the crime. There is subjecting her to a psychiatric oh examination. The prosecution is so the suspect is fully accountable for her lessons. Oh, Actions. So the defense is in direct opposition to this and has submitted their own psychiatric examination. Oh, Reporting denying the suspect's accountability. There's a court trial. session. Trial. There's a trial. The trial. trial. The trial is coming. In such a oh bitch. my god! No, I just got in. Is this still going? Oh yes. my god, hurry! Is it just oh. gonna? Is it just gonna keep playing until it's all the way at the top? Oh. Or is it gonna fade out when we get to the middle? Nope, it's going all the way up, dude. Oh my we gotta god! We gotta go. We gotta ten seconds just more to get through. Think That's it. All the time that we could have saved oh. if it just scrolled a no, bit dude. faster. Here we go. We're getting hyped. It's, it's about to end. The music's still so high. It's about to end. The screen's so slow. It's about to end. Uh, it's almost there's four lines left. We're so close. I, oh, oh, shit. Oh, there's more. <laughs> there's more. It's, it's, just it's just the logo. logo. It's just the logo. Everyone calm it's down. It's, yeah, okay. <sighs> but that's really should they cry Kai. Bitch. Well, that sure was a terrible credit sequence. Nah, it's not great. Come on! If, if they were that slow in the movie jump, theaters, jump. we would have left. We would have left the damn theater by now. We yep. would, we'd be done. I was. It's not worth waiting for the end credits yep. sequence. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Uh huh. Cool. Well, there oh. we go. Now it's in the center. We did it. That was we made it to the end. Two and a quarter hours of my time. Fuck yeah! Every Just second for worth those it. Credits. Worth it. Hashtag worth it. Hashtag it. Jerry survived. No minor injuries. No zombified Jerry. There was no record of that. And that's the end. Oh, Sumi Roboshi, we get the Star Jump mode and the Spooky South Fix. Wow. We can also well, do the, like, a lot of the fun stuff. I guess. 
I guess. I guess. The tips reading room has been unlocked. We can read all. We get all the tips. We got it. We get the boing room. Wow, the, stop the boing room. room is there now. We can talk to Ryukushi. I get to be Ryukushi again. We got a new tip. The demon script. All we right. should read that. Let's just finish this. Let's do it. Let's finish this. Why did you keep my chair all the way over here, you fool? So that I could stand up and dance over the awful credit sequence. Oh, we got the third the curtain call because we made it and nobody died. Ugh. So good, dude. Nobody died or anything. We fucking did it. That's a load of rubbish. Nah, they dude, all died it. in the gas attack. Nah, dude. We fucking did it. What do you think the military showed up for anyway? What mil uh, what military are we talking about? This, what do you mean? Well, it's military. There's okay. a huge military that showed I don't know up what you're there. About. My headphones are really loud from turning anyway, the speakers let's do it. up. Final tip. I uh, all right. Uh, I don't actually know how to get there. Yeah. The Maki somewhere. Yeah, that one. Tips. Tips. The demon script. Da, da, da. Give me this shit. Let's go. Let's go. The seventeenth year of the Heisei era. Heisei era. Early summer, eighty two thousand five. Wow, that sure is the future. The car began to rattle as the road turned from asphalt to gravel. The cry of the cicadas, uh, time to up, seeped through their tightly shut windows. No, but they're not the evening ones. So we'll get there. Most people would open their car windows and let the natural air in, along with the sounds of the cicadas. Oh, how times have changed. But people are also spoiled. He'd rather keep himself cool with the air conditioning turned to max and listen to the sounds of nature. Usually it was the rainy season at this time of the year, but this June, the summer had already come without any rain. Just like how the weather was on that day 20 years ago. The, or, I mean... The air around this area is just I, as clear as I remember it. I want to say it's Oishi. I want to say it's Oishi. Okay. That's what I'm going to Oh, but there's two people. Yeah. Of course there's two people. It's Oishi and... Not, and who do you Akasaka. think? You think Akasaka? Okay. Okay. Which one is which? I don't know. The air around this the air around this area is just as clear as I remember it. Uh, yeah, the winds are cool and the sunshine is bright. This place could have been a world heritage site like in Gifu. What a waste. But thanks to that there are no irritating tourists around here, see? It makes it much better. Why do tourists forget about pedestrian traffic laws when they're in rural areas? Oh if they they walk in the middle of the road, you know? <laughs> what? 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 That's Akasaka? Who is talking with Akasaka? Who is Sen- Why is Senpai? What? Why, what does that m one mean? Senpai I don't know. Senpai means like a teacher or a, or somebody who's in okay. charge of you. Like Senpai, it's when so you like really love Oishi? someone. So it's probably not I Oishi. guess we lose five points. Uh, who the hell is it then? I don't know. Oh. Oishi's- No, no well, Akasaka's whatever. kid who definitely didn't die at the end of our I mean, it might be, but I don't know why they call him Senpai. Uh, that's- that's- It in, seems like a I weird- it seems like a weird choice. Not as much as I used to. My job doesn't give me much free I guess time. I'll just ah, ha, 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 same here. Oh hey, there he is, says the person. And now it's Oishi. The other man noticed and waved his hand before anyone in the car could honk the horn. The man was a young fellow on a motorcycle yes, with a it's big backpack on his shoulders. He looked like he was ready to go camping. Akasaka and his partners, plural. plural. What the fuck is going on? Stepped out of the car and shook hands with the young man. Captain? Captain? It's good to is, see you Is again. this one of the guys? Oh my god, is this one of the Oishi from, from Tokyo? Yo, how have you been doing lately? Wait, which one's which? Well, oh I my hope. god. You can take it easy today. This is Akasaka Senpai. What? He took care of me Who back is in talking? college. Who is talking? My name's Akasaka. She was supposed to come today, but what? had to go for a medical check up, check up at the last minute. Anyway, it's a pleasure to meet Why you. Why can't we just have Oishi? It is an yeah. honor, sir, says this man. So, Akasaka Senpai, where shall we go first? His name was Mamoru Akasaka. He was, he was a he veteran directive. This veteran, veteran directive. Veteran directive from the Tokyo Metropolitan directive. Police Department. Directive. Let's see what, just what you heard. Despite the fact that he was close to his retirement, he hadn't lost his clear instinct and sharp eyes at all. Those eyes showed the confidence he'd built through many risky experiences, and he had a well-built muscular body and a fearless aura. He must have fought against many violent criminals. Like a Wishi's evil clone. His connection to Namizawa went back almost 30 years, all the way back to 1978. He was in the public safety division in the Metropolitan Police Department. He came to Namizawa to investigate the kidnapping case of the grandson of Inugai. Inugai. Yeah, we're right. The then Minister of Construction. There he met Oishi and Rika Furude, who was important for some reason. Rika Furude predicted her own death. Akasaka regretted for the rest of his life that he couldn't save that little girl from her fate. He saw the news of the great Hinamizawa disaster on TV and met up again with Oishi. They pledged to uncover the mystery of both the cruel fate that fell upon the little girl and the series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa. 
Unfortunately, Hinami's eye was sealed off for a long time. As a result, all Akasaka and Oishi could do for the past 20 years was publish the little information they gathered and ask for their readers to send their tips and clues. <gasps> was this more fuel for an authorship theory? Yep. But recently, the seal on Hinami's eye had finally been lifted. However, they couldn't come to Hinami's eye until today due to Akasaka's busy work schedule and Oishi's poor health. In fact, Oishi was supposed to come with Akasaka, but he was called in for a checkup, which we just had mentioned. But it was an emergency. Of the course. other two, the other two who came along were Akasaka's juniors from university. One worked at the ground SDF, and the other was his subordinate. Neither of them apparently have names. They were assigned the mission of Celia Finamizawa, so they were quite knowledgeable about the village. Akasaka took out a scrapbook from his bag. The corners of the scrapbook were all dented, making it look very old. Akasaka flipped through the pages, thought for a second, and let them know his first destination. All right, please take me to Onigafuchi Swamp. No problem, right this way, sir. The young man got on his bike and waited for the others to get back to their car. They halted each other to signal that they were ready, and the young man led the car to the swamp. Heading through the forest, they came to an open area where the ground was covered by concrete. There wasn't even a single drop of water in sight. All the water of the swamp had been replaced by concrete. This is what Onigafuchi Swamp looked like now. Huh. There isn't even a single drop of water, let alone a swamp. I was told that they sealed the swamp right out of the uh, disaster. This place was already encased in concrete by the time I arrived here for my mission. Let's go down there and take a closer look. Akasaka got out of the car and walked to the center of the concrete-filled swamp. It wasn't a parking lot or a heliport. It was just a big, huge, empty concrete space right in the middle of the forest. So this is the place people say it was a landing spot for UFOs. Really? I've, I've never heard of that. Well, that's what they write on occult websites. They say this is the place where our government met with aliens. Can't blame them for such rumors, though. Because an empty concrete space in the middle of a forest sure does look weird. <laughs> Volcanic gas erupted from the swamp in June 1983. The deadly mixture of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide engulfed and destroyed Hinamizawa in a single night. The village was sealed off and the SDF covered the swamp with concrete. But the people who write those rumors on the internet actually have a point. Any geologist can tell you covering a source of volcanic gas with concrete is absolutely useless. Oh. Hmm, that is true. I've, I've never heard of anyone trying to prevent a volcano from erupting by pouring concrete into its crater. On the other hand, our country is known for wasteful construction, using the taxpayer's money. Lately, people who love things like supernatural phenomena and UFOs write on the internet about the great Hinamizawa disaster. It's well known by now that the cause of the disaster was an eruption of deadly volcanic gas from a magma chamber. Magma chamber. In, 18, in 1986, a similar disaster occurred at Lake Nyos in Cameroon, Africa. So people easily believed that such a rare natural disaster could occur anywhere on Earth. And that was what happened in Hinamizawa as well. However, a rumor about another possible explanation had begun to fly around on the internet recently. They say that the disaster was a cover-up by the government, and there was actually a biochemical terrorist attack by aliens. Why had such a rumor begun to spread now? They claimed to back up their theory with a secret document known as File Number 34. Oh, do they, Ryukashi? It's a weird number. It's oh, a weird, it's a weird, do they? It's a weird number to pick. I don't know why they'd pick that number. But anyway, someone online named it file number 34 for descriptive purposes, but the name spread and stuck since then because it sounded like a government conspiracy. People loved it. It's unknown how or from where they obtained Why? Documents. Why would you do this to me? Because you I was lent putting down your to headphones pick something back. Up. I was being This is your nice. punishment for dropping my headphones. But I was putting it back. But they posted scans it's and pictures. It's unknown how or from where I can't they obtained these documents. But they posted this. scans and pictures, which were all ridiculous. Every single one of them. Go. But they posted scans and pictures. All ridiculous. Which were all ridiculous. They were all ridiculous. Plus, more fake evidence was produced over time. So now, even the existence of such documents are in doubt. File number 34 deserves a bit more explanation. However, since it started on the internet, truths and lies are all mixed together and has become more like an urban legend. So, this is what is believed to be mostly true. File number 34 was a notebook written by a nurse named Mio Takano, who worked at a local clinic in Hinamizawa. File number 34 was most likely named after her. This woman was a researcher who studied the demon myth of Hinamizawa and tried to solve what it meant. The contents of this notebook state that she prophesied the Great Hinami's Disaster of 1983. According to her research, a UFO crash landed in Hinamizawa a long time ago and sunk into Inogifuchi Swamp. The UFO carried a parasitic bacteria from space and they began to infect the locals. 
Sounds legit. The infected villagers began to behave extremely violently, so much so that they were fit for the word demon. Mio Takano insisted that this was the explanation for the myth about demons pouring out of the swamp. An alien who survived the crash realized that the earthlings had gone crazy because of the bacteria he brought in, and he decided to show himself to the villagers to help them out. This is how Oshiro Sama was born. The alien was able to cure the villagers with highly advanced technology, but couldn't eradicate the bacteria completely. Since the villagers looked up at the alien as some sort of deity, the alien utilized its status to hand down specific rules to villagers in order to stabilize the disease. The bacteria took a liking to Hinamizawa's habitat, so when it carried the disease left Hinamizawa, their symptoms would re-emerge. Therefore, the alien made it a rule not to leave the village. This leads to the legend of the transcendence of Anikafuchi. The weird practices and miracles that the village performed were realized by means of the advanced technology that they received from the alien. <laughs> the maniacs do indeed have a colorful perspective on things, don't they? You remember Nostradamus' prophecies? People said the world was going to end in 1999, but nothing happened in July and people acted like they didn't even know about it. Those TV shows made people as scared as they could be and then ignored the fact it didn't happen. But Mio Takano did predict the Great Tsunami's our disaster. It's not a lie. Put this page in the scrapbook. You must be joking. <laughs> I mean, there is no indication. Yeah, I'll like, take points for that let's shit. Just, can we just take like 10 points for this tip? Yep. Because like, otherwise we're going to be here forever. No points. As time passed... What? No points? After that. Oh, okay. As time passed, the bacteria stabilized in human bodies and became harmless. The alien and the bacteria began to fade away from people's minds. However, the alien has lived on for hundreds of years with the protection of the three families. It still lives on as the spirit of a deity in the secret temple of the Fruita Shrine. The alien manipulated the bacteria living inside of the villages and maintained control over them for hundreds of years. The alien wanted to regain its power, we've never heard this before, and started researching how to bring back the lost powers of the bacteria, etc, etc. And Felix nods his head side to side. Things get an up and down. Things get much stranger from there. People say that the disaster was actually part of the alien's plan to conquer the entire Earth by spreading the reawakened bacteria. The Japanese government has a secret division that fights against alien invasions. In, in vegetations, and they trained at Era 51 in the US, etc, etc, and they moved in to stop the invasion by sealing off the entire village, and they killed all the residents by using toxic gas, etc, etc. Ahaha! There's a movie that's just like that. Some black guy is the lead character. What was the title? Am I something? I actually have no idea. Independence Day? No, no clue. Really? Yeah. What? what? It could be anything. Yeah, I know, it's too crazy to be real. But the writer of this bunch of bull, Mia Takano, was mysteriously murdered. Is it meant to be Men in Black? Yes, there's Men in Black. Right. M-I-B. What are you- Sorry. Are you okay? M-I immediately made me think Mission Impossible. Really? Oh. Yeah. No, and I was like, Tom Cruise is definitely not black. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> That's all right. Let's, let's push through this shit. Mia Takano was mysteriously murdered in June 1983. Right before her death, she gave this scrapbook to a girl as if she knew she was going to die very soon. That girl is known as Girl A, as opposed to Soldier A. Some guy who investigated this case was able to track it down to a girl named Reina Ryugu. So, now it's known as the Reina Ryugu theory on the internet. Reina Ryugu inherited Mio Takano's will by means of the scrapbook. She tried to fight against plane invasion by holding a school hostage and demanded the local police uncover the island's plot. Of course, no one believed her and they assumed she was in a state of paranoia, which she definitely wasn't. Back then, people assumed that Reina Ryugu took Mio Takano's uh, delusion seriously and was murdered to commit a poorly executed crime. I don't even know at this point. When this she held the school hostage, Reina Ryugu told the local police that the alien was controlling the three families and that it was plotting partism on a massive scale. And the very next day, the great Hinamizawa disaster occurred. You gotta be kidding! Couldn't it just be a coincidence? I don't know. According to people who believe it's not just a coincidence, there are many inconsistencies in the STF's immediate. Uh, immediate. sealing off operation! Filling this swamp with concrete is one example. Several of the STF soldiers on duty at the time testified that some people were conducting secret investigations outside the usual geological survey before the air was closed off. Of course, those who think it's just a coincidence say that the researchers simply were taking precautionary measures to keep unauthorized people out of the area. I'd have to agree with a lot of people. People also question why they sealed off the village for such a long time after its volcanic gas eruption. Miyake Island was only sealed off for four to five years. What happened in Hinamiza was an exceptionally rare natural disaster, yet it was sealed off for 20 years, over even. I heard that the residents of Miyake Island returned to their home island faster than it was originally intended because they had requested it so strongly. 
In the case of Naomi-sao, there were no reasons to lie if he wished to return in the first place. Perhaps the government took their time until they were absolutely certain that it was safe. You want to take this one? Sure. Hmm. How about this one? The SDF members who were on the mission to seal off in MSR had their blood samples taken periodically. Some of them would discharge with the, from the mission without any explanation after the results came back. Some believe they were using the members of the SDF as human test subjects to see if they got infected or not. Well, I think they would just check it up on the members' health conditions since they were in the area when the gas disaster occurred. Besides, normal businessmen also take annual physical checkups, and they had their blood samples taken there as well. Yeah, I understand your point too, but I have another interesting theory. There are some people who believe there was no gas emitted during the so-called Great Hinazawa disaster. No volcanic gas? What does that mean? Basically, what they're saying is there was no volcanic gas and it was sort of government cover-up. It's like in the Spielberg movie, you know, the one where humans make contact with UFOs? Independence Day! Yes, exactly. You see, that's exactly how maniacs always explain things. What kind of basis do they have to say there was no volcanic gas emission? You, you nod to me like there's any order of this. No, Have you noticed that I've used like five different voices? It Has it only been five? People. You know what, it might have been more than that. <laughs> well, a bunch of those maniacs came to the army as soon as the seal was lifted. According to them, the hydrogen sulfide in the volcanic gas should have caused some corrosion to the metallic objects and major damage to the wildlife. However, they found no such signs of disruption which led them to believe that there was no volcanic gas to begin with. But this village was abandoned for 20 years. I doubt that they could find anything anyway. <laughs> well, that's the thing with the internet. You can't believe everything you read on it. Akasaka Senpai, please don't tell me you're buying these stories. Everybody looks at Akasaka. At first I didn't, but lately I'm beginning to think there might be some truth to them. You believe in UFOs? Oh, come on. Well, what if this scrapbook is the real file number 34? Huh? The scrapbook is the one that Reina Ryugu possessed when she took the school hostage on June 25th, 1983. It was assumed to be lost during the confusion of the disaster, but Oishi San's old friend was able to locate it in an evidence storage at the prefectural police headquarters. Back then, Oishi thought Reina Ryushi was a bad egg, but after reading this again, <laughs> but after reading this again after the Great Hinawazawa disaster, some of the content seemed to hold vital clues. It's not the alien part that he was interested in, but her theory that an endemic disease of parasitic microbes in Hinawazawa was responsible for the curse of Oshirasama. Of course, there's no proof that such microbes existed, so it still remains at a theoretical level. Rishi san says the three families might have been researching how to bring back the original deadlier microbe in order to revive the religious devotion the villagers used to have. The Great Hinamizawa disaster could be an experiment that went wrong. This theory is also based on the theories and myths he found on the internet. The village clinic's chief doctor died mysteriously right before the Great Hinamizawa disaster. A girl, Rika Furude, was brutally murdered on the night Reina Ryugu took the school hostage. There could have been an underground research lab beneath the village clinic, and Dr. Iri could have been forced to do microbiological research, but he couldn't live with his own sins and he committed suicide. Ryuki Furude could have been brutally murdered in a sacrifice for some sort of ritual ceremony in the name of Oshiro Sama's revival. However, the experiment went wrong. Instead of the microbes being parasitic on the villagers, they became a killer virus, and they exterminated the entire village in one night. It's obvious that it wasn't a simple gas disaster. We cannot ignore the fact that one girl predicted a bioterrorist attack right before the disaster and that several uh, villagers died mysteriously, including Mio Takano herself, who wrote about all that in the scrapbook there, right on the blog there. It doesn't sound right to say that the Great Hinamazawa disaster was an unprecedented, unpredicted, and coincidental natural disaster. When you read this file number 34, it's super obvious. So you're saying that the Great Hinamazawa disaster wasn't a rare natural disaster, but that it was in fact an act of bioterrorism by some cultists. In the modern era, everyone in Japan knows about the shocking incident where a doomsday cult created a nerve gas, sarin, and unleash it for the purposes of mass murder. It's pretty fucked. But in the 80s, the idea of a single cult being able to carry out such an act of terrorism didn't even cross our minds. Uh, some also whisper that the SDF kept the area sealed for so long so they could study some lethal uh, virus, but I'm not convinced. <laughs> At least this story sounds more convincing than the one with aliens and UFOs. The idea of cultists and domestic terrorism sounds more rational. Maybe there really was a UFO that crash landed when the interview we took the school hostage. One of their demands to the police was to have them all pulled out of the wreckage of the UFO from the Omnigafuji swamp. That's ridiculous. How dare you. Well, if I wanted to make sure if it's ridiculous or not, look at it. The, the swamp is filled with concrete several meters thick, and there's no way we can check. 
This is all because of that ridiculous construction that doesn't have anything to do with to preventing the volcanic gas. Well then, uh, well then, the only way to prove Akasaka Senpai's theory will be to find a survivor who knows how and try to find that microbe and hit on her. Sadly, that's almost impossible. <laughs> Thank you. After the great Hinam is our day as Aster, some survivors were subject to a witch hunt. Cox gun. So even if there are any survivors, they won't tell you that they're from this area. Damn. Right after the disaster, some people who were from Inami's always started displaying erratic behavior when they started dying mysteriously and committing suicide in strange ways. People got scared of them and chased them out of the neighborhoods. The government was practically useless in protecting their privacy at the time. Their privacy at the time. So the former residents, former residents of Inami's are lied about where they were from and have kept it that way since. In that case, it's a dead end. But it's my duty as a cop to keep trying. There's enough circumstantial evidence to say the Great Inemazawa's disaster wasn't a natural one. If I could grab a hold of one piece of concrete, uh, I could think I, I think I could start reeling in the truth behind all of this. Is that a fishing joke? Yeah, but it's been over 20 years. The truth might be lying somewhere very deep in the darkness. That's true. I might not find any answers. It's already the 21st century. What happened in Inamizawa in June 1983? The only factual evidence that... Mio Takano... No! This is... This is Akasaka! The only factual evidence that I had was that Mio Takano mysteriously died and left her scrapbook predicting a bioterrorist attack. Yeah, dude. A young girl that took a school hostage to make people listen to this prediction, but no one took it seriously. The chief doctor of the village clinic committed suicide. People believe that a little girl, Rika Furude, was a reincarnation of Oyashirisama, and she was brutally murdered. What was the truth behind this scrapbook? Was it written to reveal a huge conspiracy, or was it just a bunch of delusions written by an occult maniac? If the contents of the scrapbook were true, the disaster could have been avoided if we heeded the warnings of one girl. If they weren't true, then who created the disaster to follow the scenario of the scrapbook? <gasps> who did it? After the sarin nerve gas incident, the words mind control came into the spotlight. In contrast to brainwashing, which can easily force a person to commit certain acts in the short term, mind control takes a long time to gradually make a person believe what he or she must do is the right thing to do, and to act upon it as if it were his or her own idea. It's a form of character alteration, which is far more serious than brainwashing. The cult behind the sarin gas incident induced fear and anxiety into its members through its revelations of doomsday. At the same time, they ordered them to do certain things as a means of salvation, and had them do so voluntarily. The formula was quite similar to how Reina Ryugu became a puppet of file number 34. So does that mean that Reina Ryugu was mind controlled by someone? Does that mean that the cult that mind controlled her tried to cause the end of the world in order to increase the credibility of their teachings just like the other cult did? Would that make file number 34 some sort of religious textbook for them? When I lose my grip on what's true and what's not, it sometimes makes me feel that someone might be laughing in amusement at this disaster. Felix. The scrapbook was like a script. It was a script for a tragedy that takes the lives of thousands of villagers in one night. It was a script for demons who laugh at that loss of human life. Someone wrote the script. Someone performed it. Someone watched the show and laughed. Damn it. What the hell happened in Hinamazawa in June 1983? There we go. That's interesting. Yeah. You still thought that was interesting? That was fun? Did Keichi appear at any point in that? No. Okay. No, it was Akasaka and his two lackeys and that young kid. No no other char no other characters that we know appeared in that scene, as far as I know. Well, yeah. Because I'm trying to think. What have we heard about Keiichi after when the disaster took place? There was that thing of the recording with him talking about the dude drowning, right? Yeah. And that was the end of arc four? Oh, that was, wasn't that three? Or was it that, three? I thought that was three. I don't. I don't think that we had that conversation after. I believe that was arc three. Yeah. When he's like in the hospital bed and somebody snuck in to do an interview with him. Yeah. I don't remember what the name. And the guy who like went into the interview was like killed later. He was drowned or whatever. Yes. So good on him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why. You, you got a theory in the in the percolating, percolating. Well, it's, it's just down. the the suggestion to me that Akasaka is using the same dialogue as Keiichi there. Yeah. Uh is mm -hmm. very interesting trying to tie those two characters together. For sure, for sure. Um, and I don't know, like, I don't really want to lean on an authorship idea too much because that's only like the second time we've really had it presented to us. Yeah. But I think if I was to make an authorship <laughs> theory, the idea that Keiichi was an insert character for Akasaka yeah, is sure. probably the most yeah. upfront thing that Ryukishi's presenting there. Sure. You give that a go. 
I mean, Cage is the insert carry for the audience as well, but you know, you could you could you could, you could give that a whack. You could give that a whack. Um, yeah, like the yeah. idea that you know it started off with Akasaka, like how could this have happened? And then he's like, okay, what about if it was another character? What about if it was another character? What if I was the hero? Yeah, like as I said back at the end of Arc Four, that like you could say that it was them writing alternate scenarios to try to figure out what really happened. Sure. Um, but there hasn't been as much evidence of that. No, no, for sure. Um, like other than you know, the scenes in arc four and six that we've just had. Yeah. I mean, those are the only points. They're both like after the main story is concluded. Like, yeah, it's not exactly littered through the various conflicts and escalations in the story. It's just like at the end, what about, what if we like look at the situation after the yeah. disaster happens, you know, it feels to me more like the kind of thing that Ryukishi is dropping in just to see what people will think about it. Sure. Um, like, you know, the idea that people could come out of this story and say, oh, it was clearly a story about Akasaka trying to figure out what happened, or people saying, no, it actually happened, and Akasaka is just an allegory for how we perceive things that we don't know about. Like, sure. you know, the the point being that I, it doesn't feel to me like there's explicitly an answer there yet, if at all. Sure. Because it's such a vague, disconnected detail from the rest of the story. I guess we'll um we'll have, to, we'll have to find out, and maybe maybe you'll surprise us. Maybe, maybe I you, will. Maybe you'll come in with the most ironclad authorship theory that you've ever seen in your life. Have you um, seen many of those? I've never seen one before. I've not seen one, honestly. I've not seen a story where there was an authorship theory that was you know any good. They're mostly made by talentless hacks. It's not for excuse. It's like it's like it was all a dream theories. Yeah, they're pretty terrible. Are you telling me that Red Letter Media hinges itself on? on dream theories or authorship, authorship theories? theories i mean they constantly call out the fact that their show is a show so you know i mean well i mean they constantly call out the fact that they're talentless hacks as well eh, right is, is that their line it is their line yes okay, cool. it is their joke i'm finally talentless coming to understand hacks. that's how mike says it i see talentless hacks. i don't know who that is i just I, all, mike everything... is like one of the primary hosts so, it's mike and jay before we started recording today <laughs> ben and i were talking about like reviews and how they affect our opinions and i was uh-huh. saying that it's like it's <laughs> It's, it's kind of weird to, like, have your only information about products be from reviews alone. Sure. Like, especially with media products where you, like, you know, present a opinion about the story that you heard in a review without having actually read it's it. It's disingenuine. Yeah. And but it's interesting. It's kind of funny because the a brilliant parallel about that is that I only know Red Letter Media from, from me? you talking yeah. about You them. only know about the people. Look, <laughs> shout out to Flo because, like, yeah. Flo made, like, this fantastic video and it was, like, just all the different When They Cries and Higginbana and I think a little bit of RGD smashed together, which is great. But um, it had a clip that was, like, it, it's, it's like an immemorium kind of thing. It's like, Red Letter Media, continue on and, and continue get, make, allowing people to, like, have opinions on things that they don't actually know anything about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's so perfect. <laughs> That's exactly how I, like, enjoy Red Letter Media. Uh, but yeah, no, like, shows like that, I, like, I will often, when I hear that, a, like, a movie's come out, I will, rather than watch the movie, just watch their show, because I find it to be, like, infinitely more entertaining. Mm. As I think I do, you know? Like, if I haven't watched the movie, how can I judge that? But, I don't know, I, I tend to just enjoy what they're talking about. And if I don't know what they're talking about, it's, like, a hundred times funnier. I don't know. It's fun. It's weird. It's critic culture i guess um, i suppose so yeah let's go all right T- speaking of all the ship theories play your hero. i do oh i will meet him one day hello my name is rukishio 7 you better motherfucking get this dude on death of the reader at some point it's we have going to. to happen we have to before that show ends it's in never gonna 20 end. years we're gonna be doing it for the rest of our we're lives we're gonna we got stories for years no i hope you enjoyed playing higurashi when they cry ho chapter six sumihoroboshi there are several themes I wanted to write in this chapter, but I'd like to talk about one of them here. It's about the denial of murder. This is something I had to write sooner or later since this is a novel about serial murders. There are two means that youngsters in particular use these days to solve problems, which are murder and suicide. When we feel stressed, we choose to either get rid of the source of the stress or to get away from it. Let's say you're bullied by a kid at school. You have two ways to solve the problem. You choose either to get rid of the kid from your current environment or to get away from the environment itself. Usually bullies are stronger and have their underlings, so you don't stand a chance to learn to get rid of them. It's also not easy to switch classes or to quit school, so you can't easily get away from the problem. Situation. Situation. You just click a bit fast. It's okay. Problem. Situation. As a result, the situation gets worse day by day, and your stress urges you to solve the problem immediately. And you come up with murder or suicide as easy solutions. 
If suicide is considered defeat, you'd want to consider murder. I feel like there are many people who think that way. However, if you actually committed a murder, it wouldn't be easy to pay for the sin. I believe murderers know that well too. But you really hate the bully who pushed you to the limit where you have no choice but to kill him. So, with a determination that turns your entire life upside down, you commit murder. But if you have such strong de determination, there have to be more ways to take than opting for murder, which should be the last resort. You can talk to your friends. If that doesn't work, you can talk to your family. If that doesn't work, you can talk to your teacher. If that doesn't work, then what? There have to be more ways. If you have the determination to give up on your life by committing murder, there have to be more ways. Our modern era is better than any era before it. There are many hotlines you can call to talk to someone. Even if you don't have any friends or family, there are many places you can go for help. The people who will answer the phone aren't amateurs. They're volunteers, but they're also veterans who have worked as social workers or juvenile counselors for a long time. I can assure you that they have more social experience and passion than your parents do. <laughs> People who work to help people for free can't be bad people. If you feel like you have no choice but to kill the bully or commit suicide, please try to call those hotlines. People who think it's useless to talk to others usually haven't really talked to anyone. Have the courage to call. There will be somebody you can completely rely on at the other end of the line. Don't keep it to yourself. Talk to somebody. Ryukushio 7 wrote such a long story just to tell you this, he must be a very poor writer. So Ryukushio 7 wants to talk to you all, rather than worrying all by himself. How can I write even more entertaining stories? Heh. <laughs> 07th Expansion. Ryukushio 7. And that's it. We've done it. We've reached the end. Oh, fuck, I love this man. Kasami Horobashi. Oh. Congratulations, Ben. Hmm. Now you have to wait a week to cry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do the recap next week, but holy shit, that last like little bit there just like uh, hit me right in the fucking heart. Rukushi, I love you. You're the the best fucking friend I could ever ask for. Anyway. This may be the longest episode we've ever uploaded to the channel, so you're welcome. But it was still not four hours. Not quite. So five hours. I said it was five and a half hours. Well, no, but it, we cut out oh, an yeah. hour for the last video, which means this one no, should no, no, have no. been four hours you're plus right. a bit. So we did very well, I think. We have officially defeated the system. Yeah. Take that, Lambda Delta, and your auto, auto advance videos, you fool. How dare you try and take us down. Next time. <laughs>